Everybody, I think that coming up next screen means that I'm live, uh, so I can talk to you instead of having to uh, typing. Okay. Uh, um, there we go. Have we have Victor Ashkenazi like playing against uh, Wilcox Snellings. Um, cool. Wilcox put uh, Costa Rica and gets that uh, flag on the on there. Um, though he seems quite like an American, but I know he lives in Costa Rica. Victor playing out of the U.S., of course. Um, they got their clock desires. Everyone on the streaming has been requesting it. Um, there we are with the ZMF. Can't bang it with a cup. No place to let out your frustration. How boring. And it does that weird LED thing where it flashes. No clock is good on stream, in my opinion. I don't know. Personally, I'm not going to enjoy this match with the ZMF, I don't think. They'll probably be pretty quiet. <laughs> I think... Wilcox is Costa Rican. I guess also identifies as Costa Rican. I don't know. It's a fun way of putting that. There's got to be a story behind my t-shirt. Uh, I don't know. I think the story tells itself. I had a nice chat with Frank Frigo about it. It's my friend making shirt for sure. 5-2 split followed up. I think optional run, but the split is a little stronger. I'm sure Will knows all these. Uh, the other clock is available in the Galaxy Store, so advertising it for sure. Um, I think, I don't know, I guess no clock seems to display on the stream all that well, but it matches the board very nicely. Nice wood cutout. Probably looks a lot classier in person here. Potentially easier to set up. And look at this. After two splits, we have a really complicated additional splitting play to figure out what the heck option to play with this 4-3. And Victor's already stumped. Um, I love that he's thinking about it. He's not the type of player that likes to memorize second roll responses and will think strategically wants to do what he wants to do. And definitely nothing jumps out with the 4-3 here. So ahead in the race, we want to run to a double shot. Probably not. And he figures out that the tempo hit on the ace is worth it. Finds the best play. That's pretty impressive stuff, I think. It, not, not a play that jumps out at you by any means.
and response. Hits and covers, okay. Strong response from Will. Easy plays for him. Victor gets to anchor and hit back, okay. Checkers playing themselves a little more clearly now. Three six is another return from the bar. And Victor's got four checkers back to Will's two still. 2-1 two is going to be another return hit, I do believe. Still a decent amount of ammunition in the zone for Victor, despite those four checkers back. Fortunately, they've come from the midpoint. Double twos probably makes a piece of structure. That fifth checker back is not worth so much now that there's already four, and we already have an advantage there. And uh, the step up to the 21 is fairly automatic to him. Okay. The 13 to 11, I guess we get to keep a checker or keep the 11 point if we use it to, to build the five points, so it's got a little tactical value there. Victor can either make an offensive point and get a back checker moving or maybe improve his anchor. I'm not really sure what's stronger here, um, but this seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, making the anchors got, or the eight, 18 is a nice improvement too, but with so many back, I think he appreciates the deep contact and doesn't mind just getting a checker running. Uh, Will, with the racing lead and less checkers back, is happy to just escape a checker. Try to play a simple game here. Double threes, looks like it's going to point on head and switch to attacking. But of course, we're going to have to think about potentially making the 20 point, but I think we can disregard it pretty quickly. 22 point is serving us fine, and this offensive play is, is well worth it. 2-6 escapes for Will. Great shot from the bar. You can avoid being hit with a five. He's one step closer to escaping and consolidating that racing lead. Uh, Victor performs, though. It's not a pleasant hit from the midpoint. He could end up with aces disconnected in the outfield completely and at high risk. Four six is going to try to run again. And once again, Victor wants to hit with a three, but there's some cost to it. Three hits, and I think four is going to get moving to the outfield. We really need some presence out there. So 20 to 16 looks pretty clear here to me. <clears throat> I guess another play B. What, are, what else would he be thinking about here? I don't think he wants to come off the anchor. He could consider slotting and just trying to make a five prime and making the offensive side simpler, but we look pretty crunched up in the, in the back area and so well developed on the front that I, I really feel the pressure to get a checker moving. I'd like to know in his head what his play B is here. Oh, thanks for the happy birthday. I'll take him late, too. That's fine. Hey there, Bob. Guess we're going to have all the American viewers in here. Yeah, I wish it would be nice if we could tell what his play B that he's thinking about is here. He knows he needs to hit. Is he reconsidering the hit? I don't, I don't think so. I guess the other play would be to not hit at all and make the 20 and come out to the bar point or something like this. I, I don't know. The, I'm so oh, okay. So now I look at the XG analysis and I see that the 2018, 2218 bidding for a better anchor somewhere has some merit. I'm pretty surprised to see this actually. It seems just like an overplay to me, but maybe we're getting far enough forward that we don't want to be stuck on the 22. Okay, it does find the best play. Five six is a fan and Victor taking over control of the position with three checkers back. I imagine Will can still play this game for contact and the lack of outfield presence, but it's pretty threatening. And I think sending the cube puts a decision to Will for sure. He's just going to roll. Okay, we're way shy. We're way shy with all the checkers back and the disconnection. Um, the offense looks so good, though, that I'm definitely tempted by the position. Creates a five prime, and there's still, after this, plenty of play with all those checkers back for, uh, for Will. So, okay, makes plenty of sense. I think the only three we really have is down here. Leaves the least shots. We don't want to leave a double shot to escape with tempo. And still plenty of ways for him to prime those three checkers in back. Uh, Victor does need to roll pretty well to escape nicely, but he might have enough threat. Sending a second checker back behind that five prime could be enough here to send the cube now. Um, five, three, four, three, two, five. Quite a few numbers, it looks like. And aces, of course, in addition. So more than half the time, I think. Or right around half the time, at least. Still an easy take in case Victor doesn't roll one of those things. Um, Will has a lot of play. It The only reason I feel like it's an easy take is because I saw the cube action analysis from the last roll. This looks quite scary to me, and I can imagine a lot of people letting a cube like this go. 
Um, but it does feel important to send now. Yeah, I, I feel like there has to be market loss, and it's still really close. This is impressive. Victor really getting put to the test in this match right off the bat with some very tricky decisions. And we see the analysis now. It's a decent-sized cube that he has to find. Um, but yeah, we can see the power of things like outfield control, checkers back. Um, I think most of us are used to looking at positions where we have a five prime from the, to the, from the seven to the three and just having a lot of fear of that position and thinking white must be just crushing this position. I really do imagine a lot of players passing a cube like this. Um, but the three checkers back, disconnection, blots around. Uh, Victor's liabilities, even against just a two-point board and the random outfield points, are just massive. And Will sm snaps that up, well aware of how to play this position out. Really impressive stuff to me. 6-4 is a whiff. But I think connecting with the outfield looks pretty strong here. So 22 to 16, he's got the racing lead now. I like this quite a bit. And what is Will hoping for? Six out is pretty nice, along with the three to cover. Ooh, our aces can do quite a few things. We, we would love to cover that blot, but I think maybe making the five point seems like an option too. Oh, is it two one? Okay, okay. Well, that's gonna be a little bit easier play. Just cover another point in the outfield and make Victor roll well. Uh, the four has to hit loose because the, there isn't a, a four along with the six after he plays out 22 to 16. That play is fairly natural and a fan, and Victor's looking good. Would love to cover, but still has work to do, we can see here with all those checkers back. So interesting game develop con development concepts here, I think. Showing how the different stages of the game play. Ace five. Okay, I don't even know if he wanted to enter. Just sitting on this position feels pretty nice. Uh, making any sort of loose play against a five-point board feels like too much. Maybe we would hit for tempo to prevent ourselves from being behind a six prime if we had the opportunity. But since we don't, I, I'm quite tempted to just play behind and reproduce shots. But he's going to keep the checker pure wants to look at it instead. They're very close. Very close. 6-4. Okay, Victor has seen that roll a few too many times. And hit loose on the ace. And the only four with that is 10-6. to six. And under some pressure to roll something pretty next roll, he's going to have awkward numbers for sure as well. Will misses, so if he not all of his fives are going to cover very easily. It's not that often that he gets to 5-2, uh, doesn't work, for example. That's going to have to link up, I think, with the 16 instead, but he could instead go for mobility now and play around the 11. And, wow, the mobility play actually comes out on top. They're all very close. We can see, of course, all his fives are going to cover after he plays a role like that. Um... Coming out to the 16 takes the pressure off of Will's blot on the three as well. So it's got that downside too. And against only a two-point board, we can afford to play loose like this. Okay. You can see some merit to it. Uh, it feels like a scary play to make, but I guess not against only a two-point board. And count on Victor to find that one as well. Both of them playing really solid so far. Ace, deuce, what is this going to do? I guess we're going to have to hit twice, but this is four blots around, and Will is going to lose a lot of gammons in this position. Pretty unpleasant deuce to have to play. And a three in is going to put Will under a lot of pressure. Just entering on the ace, actually, will save a lot of gammons. He can maybe cover a blot, make the anchor, and he's got a little time to do that now as well. Victor would love to enter with a five to hit off the ace, wrong five. So he gets his choice of sixes again. Always a decision for Victor. No easy plays. It's the front checker. I really don't know how I would have chosen between those two. For some reason, XG likes the further checker. Uh, Ace deuce anchors up. Okay. Still at risk for quite a few gammons, but uh, Victor will be happy to hit that checker in the outfield and, and give him plenty of time to wait for it. What does this do? It looks like I think we're going to make the 16 and link up with the 22 as well. But we like being diversified to hit that blot, so maybe 23 to 18 makes a lot of sense, too. Both of them super close. We can see different themes. This one is uh, most solid and close to getting home. 
The other prioritize is trying to hit the blot on the upside. Uh, Will fans probably prefer to be all over the place if you know our opponent's not going to roll an ace, but they might roll an ace. Uh, four one. This gets a little more awkward now, but it gets to move. We still got room. Uh, nine to eight feels like the automatic play, but six to five has some distribution merit. Okay, already thinking about the bear off with that play. Apparently, fours and twos to pick up another checker, and he hits one. And the six probably comes from the back. Sixteen to ten, fix the most difficult problem to solve. Uh, double aces will give Will a little bit of uh, offense. Would like to enter and start building his board soon. I don't think he's at much risk of cracking. A um, little bit of backgammon threat with board checkers back as well, but not too many. Uh, Victor decides he would like a two ace and rolls it to that side. Okay. Yeah, Wilcox is someone asking if he's still elite. Yeah, definitely. Best of the best. I would love to see him get out to uh, BMAB some, or not BMAB, uh, UBC someday to see what he can do. I think he could be a contender out there for sure. Not sure what he expects. Tough to be Mochi. I'm sure he's well aware of that, but. And I think I like eight to three for the distribution, but that leaves double sixes. Is there any way off double sixes? Sure. We can play 11 to 6, and even though it stacks it up, it, sa it saves double sixes for a roll. But XG still prefers just playing into the 3 for the distribution, risk the double sixes. Okay, interesting. Yep, and Victor's going to see the tactical merit of not giving up sixes and, and make that play. It makes a lot of sense to me. Probably other ways to do that. Um, but he will want to unstack that six quickly. That's a big liability in the bear off uh, against an ace point. That's for sure. Um, no good way to do it here, though. Not a great roll. He could bring two in, but it makes these kind of goalposty looking position. This is going to not leave any shots on sixes. I like this distribution. The gap hopefully will solve itself as we enter. Um, so for now, it's okay and saves us big sets. Makes those play nicely. Two six. Okay. Will still needs to enter to start constructing his board. Five ace is going to come in and take a checker off the six to five. Yep, get ready to clear the six. Perfect Michi Mountain right there. <coughs> and Will's still fanning, so he's likely to be there for the shot until the end. Six three clears nicely for Victor. Hard to avoid leaving a shot eventually in an ace point game. But staying a long time also means that he's going to be out of risk for a lot of gammons. He should. Okay, leaves the first shot here. A lot of backgammon, sorry. A little early to hit, but of course he'll take it. 6-4, hits already. Okay. And now we're already in a contact or a containment game for Will. So he's going to have recube value well before he closes out for sure. Um, but it's going to take a while. He's got work to do before we get there, of course. And every roll, Victor's going to be threatening to escape, and he's going to have to hit. And just one whiff is going to be enough for Victor to be right back to threatening the gammon. Um, so after this play, I think we want to bring another checker from either the 20 or 19 out to contain. I don't see a strong argument for one over the other. But of course, we want to leave that while well, the bar point's staying slotted. We want to keep the checker on the 13 to cover it. And the bar point's going to be a very helpful, helpful point to have to contain this checker. And he goes with 19 to uh, 14 instead. So it looks like a small inaccuracy. Must be tactics there and rolls that cover. Those are hard to calculate and see exactly how things are going to play out. Maybe he doesn't get any new numbers uh, with sevens. Maybe all of them cover and somehow some eight plays better like double fours. Five four is going to make another blocking point in the nine. Okay, interesting. Would have loved to uh, make the bar point, but maybe that's second best. Not too bad. Three is going to... Is there any value in entering high? We could consider entering... Oh, we have no three, so we're forced to. Uh, what's our best ace here? I think... Hmm. Why not three to two? I don't know why we want to waste one of our available twos. Uh, gets even on the outside. That could be part of the thinking. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, maybe the double fours covering was why we needed to play 20 to 14. Stuck loose hitting, but not disappointed with that roll by any means. Uh, rolling the position forward. Victor threatening with a three again to escape. And hits it. I think this time he's going to play three to two at the ace. Doesn't want to spend too many spares. Will under pressure. Does not fan. Gets to hit loose. Great use of that checker on the six. And getting in some risk of backgammons when this goes poorly again. But of course, making progress forward. A fan is huge. Covering the three is a big step in the right direction. Can't quite do it. I think, yeah, getting to the, the 13 for outfield coverage seems very nice. Any other checker off the 24 involved, also very helpful. 3-6, perfect shot for Victor. Going to hop right out and force Will to find a hit from the bar, or he'll be in a lot of trouble. A fan is pretty scary for Wilcox here. Okay, enters, but doesn't hit. Gets to clean up a blot at least. Victor has strong chances of passing by and being a uh, favorite for a gamut again. Survived the onslaught so far. Most likely to just leave a direct at most. And he's going to leave a single direct indeed. Plus a 4-3 and 5-2. Both of them playing near perfect backgammon right now. 6-3 is not going to do it, but it does block double aces. That's kind of nice. And, oh, you know, 6 ace can still play. And so from here, I think 10 to 7 is fine. Not sure what he's thinking about the second piece of this. If he'd rather spend the pips from the 18 for some reason, I guess he could think about a crossover. But I don't think there's any way he's naturally saving this gammon. He needs contact and to build the containment structure. 4-3, just forced to take a checker off. 5-1 is going to shift and probably slot the next point. Or he could, maybe 18 to 13 is better and just build from the back, sure. Sure. And Will's going to be more ready if he gets a second shot this time around. Next three is trouble. 6-4 manages to cover this time. Okay. He's rolling his containment home pretty awkwardly. Wilcox having trouble making the six prime he needs. Double twos is going to clear points. In, uh oh, it could take two off. Okay. I just assumed all from the back for some reason, but of course he can rip two. And that structure looks very awkward. I don't think the gammon's at risk, so Victor's going to try to figure out if he gains long-term safety. The next two is going to be a problem if he, if he clears right away, but he has double shot levers potentially when he takes two off. The, any uh, roll containing a three. So he decides to avoid that possible scenario. Going to win enough gammons playing this way just by not leaving a shot. Uh, going to look at it at least. I don't think backgammons are very much in play anymore either. Oh, wow. They're pretty high. They're at 14% and 6.9% depending on if he rips the checkers. Wow. That's way higher than I would have guessed. Okay. 6-4. That'll be Wilcox just sitting on his position hoping for a deuce and then later hoping for... An ace, 6-3, clears nicely. Victor with seven checkers left now. Um, I think Will is going to want to leave with one and cover the three-point here. Hope that he rolls an ace right away. And he will camp out back there all the way till the end for the Coup Classique opportunity. If it gets that far. He has the perfect structure for it. And double twos. So here we are already, three checkers left, and we have the classic stay or go uh, decision, and Will's going to be forced to stay on this one, I'm pretty sure. Um, how does he get best coverage? Yeah, he can cover with sixes if he plays 18 to 14, and so why not just 10 to 5 along with that? That's the uh, best shots at making our six prime, but for sure we want to stay back and try to pick up a checker to save the gammon or even win the game if we can pick up both on an ace.
And no such luck, but Wilcox still with an opportunity to roll an ace to save the gammon. 3-2 gets back gammon and just barely dodges it, gets to leave. Okay. Four points for Victor to start. Someone asking for the XG evaluation bar vertical bar. What on earth, uh, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. Exciting match so far for sure. Double twos makes two offensive points. Double sixes. How does this play after we move things around? We can escape a checker all the way and make the bar point. This looks pretty strong. Uh, big racing lead for Victor. And is he under pressure to split now with uh, with Victor escape? Probably not. I mean, this makes an offensive point so strong. Can't be better to volunteer somewhere with a six, of course. But um, double twos is going to develop Victor's position. Does he just switch to the five with it? I think so. And how can Wilcox ever split now? So I think he's forced to stay on the ace point, and it's just going to be... If he can close the bar point, I think he's going to have some game. But if Victor can escape that checker, he's just going to have a, a pretty dead ace point game. Not a lot of time for Victor to make that escape, though. Um, so maybe he's considering stepping up to the 22 to preserve that timing for that reason. But the long-term gain of having that perfect three-point board is just worth so much, okay? And he preserves his time and goes for this play. Understandable. Double aces gets punished. And this either splits up to the 22 or makes the bar. I don't think the bar is a big improvement here over the eight points. So he's going to take the tactical opportunity of Victor on the roof to split. Would have had almost no... The double aces would have played very nicely if Victor had found the other double twos play. Bans on this roll. Okay. And Will's finding a way to start to turn this game around. It looks like he's going to anchor and step up to the 10. I don't think... Oh, wow. He does need to go for the slot. I'm surprised. This is a tough one to find, but he's still in a priming position and under a lot of pressure. He needs to take the chance while his opponent's on the bar to to contain that checker. Very interesting play. Not the kind of position where we're necessarily looking for it, but he has his opponent outboarded. I'm not sure I would arrive at the conclusion that that's the ideal game plan. I can see the upside for sure, though, that's a, so that must be part of it. Um, this looks like... I don't think we want to leave all the fly shots associated with making the four, but that looks like a pretty strong play. We can definitely step up to the 20 and not be primed anymore. And so that's going to be fairly racing oriented. Maybe not. Freezes a bunch of checkers. I think it's a little bit too strong. And leaving some fly shots like this is quite fine. But yeah, eight to four is a contender for all the pressure it puts on that single checker back. Five, three, not a lot to do with that one. I guess it gets to make the three point now that, that uh, Wilcox moved. But of course, strategically ahead in the race and running out of time, we'd love to run. But this is a, a quad shot plus the 6-5 long shot. Uh, outboarded, all these things. Um, it feels like a little too much, and we're just going to end up giving up our race most of the time. And so just improving the board for the impending contact feels a little stronger. Um, definitely understand the strategic idea of playing 24 out to 16, but I just don't think we can float it here for how often we get hit. Three-point board is a little too threatening. Maybe against the two-point board, we could try it with a little more racing lead. Here, I think we're a little too close. Well, we got PR bets going on in the in the chat. I like this. We need more odds makers and lines. When's Galaxy going to release the... We could have so much fun gambling on this. That's next Monte Carlo. Someone remind me of that. There's going to be an app for that. Why wouldn't there be?
finds to make the three-point play. Not a sizable error at stake there. Victor under a little bit of clock pressure here too. And wow, okay. Uh, Wilcox instantly going to take the board advantage change um, and volunteer these. A lot of sixes in the outfield. The 6-2 field goal. Every six hit except for that one. This time he feels like he has to run and why not get past one of the shots. And I think he's right. I think he's out of time. It's hard to imagine starting to play behind the anchor now with 8-2, uh, 6-4. to, two, six to four. When the plays were so close last time, how could it even be a contender now that it doesn't even make a new point? And Will is wondering if he's going to lose his market when he hits. With Victor having the racing lead and still an anchor to bring around, I don't think so. But he is trailing quite a bit in the match, which is probably going to pause and make him think if he's close enough to adjust to double. And sure enough, he does have a double at the score. Uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, not a double for money, but close enough to adjust with the four-point deficit. Um, I've noticed that that four-point deficit does seem to start to indicate some cube adjustments even in long matches. That seems to be where it starts. Um, and a fan, and is Victor just going to be able to let this go? He doesn't have the better board, has a single checker back, plenty of gammons available when Wilcox closes this out with 11 in the zone. I think he's going to find a pass here, and it looks like it's a sizable one. But it's difficult, given that he knows he's ahead in the race and that Wilcox still has to escape his anchor. Just entering isn't quite enough, though. He's going to get hit loose a little too often, and just the game's going to be on the line. And that's when things go well. And he's going to let it go. Pretty solid start for both of these players. One point for Will, and that can be the difference in, in backgammon for sure. Instead of getting in an early cube and potentially winning four points in that game, he only gets one. Still had a large deficit to Victor. Equity not that different overall in the long run, but the, the result is always huge swings. That's how dice work. Both of them playing under two. Great stuff. This could be a contender for best PR match of the weekend. We'll see. And with the better board, does he want to go for a split now or continue improving it? Putting checkers in front of the anchor is no problem at all, too. Um, it feels like it's a nice tactical opportunity to split and isn't too scared of a cube from Victor until Victor makes a new board point. 13 to 8 is reasonable as well, but I think we can play a little bigger split and just play in front. I like this. Yeah, it's a very good find. Common theme against the early double sixes. And double sixes, what can this do? It's going to be forced to hit on the ace for sure. And so if this is our play, I, I still, once again, I've seen this be wrong once this weekend, but eight to two just feels like completely overrunning your position. You really don't like to make the seven along with the ace, so it has a lot more merit here. But it's hard to imagine how you're going to get the anchor home after, or the 18 point home after you kind of blitz past and leave both checkers in the outfield. What you really want to do is just race. So um, this plays towards that game plan most effectively. Uh, Will rolls a pretty nice roll to just have a single checker back there. And Victor not so strong anymore. Um, can he afford to leave the shot to improve his position? It puts a lot more pressure on Will's uh, single blot. But this just plays for his most clear game plan of racing at, at zero risk. Um, just leaves a lot of issues getting off the 18. So he's going to have a pretty threatening cube if he gets away with making the four point. Um, plays very close, though, and chooses a solid option, as Victor tends to do. Doesn't like to put the game on the uh, line when he doesn't need to. Five one two in. This set is a big bit gratuitous. What set? I don't know what we're talking about. Cool. Two's okay. Uh nice shot for Victor escaping 
making progress with the anchor and likely to have a cube after this roll unless Will rolls something really strong like double sixes. I don't think eight pips is going to be enough. He's going to stay back for contact to give Victor a decision. Um, it could make it too good, but I don't think so. I think it's still... Wow, does he have enough better board? Wow, this is actually just the right play. I didn't even think of staying for contact because of all Victor's blots and board. I think Victor's still going to have a cube just in case he escapes, and he's so likely to just improve his board. And Will can only stay with the blot for one roll like this. Um, but who knows? What, what's the downside, I suppose? Slows down Victor escaping. Um, and I'm even more surprised to see that he theoretically has a take after making this play, too. And Will's just going to pass it either way. Very understandable. 41 on 4-ply. Um, Score-based somewhat, I suppose. But, wow, that's a tough take to find, even after he finds the best play that would allow him to. You stop being a, uh, a clock virgin after 100 matches. I'm still, I'm still a clock virgin, I think. So Victor, 12 away to 16 away now. Okay. 6-5 plays down after the 6-1 opening. Ace-5 is going to return fire. Then to third back for Victor again. Gets to enter high and hit loose on the bar. Four two. What does this do? We're gonna enter deep and duplicate fours. I like that idea. The other idea is to just set up, step up with both, and try to escape with our less checkers back instead of introducing another blot. Um, this looks like it's gonna cover the bar for sure, and then maybe we want to split up and try to make uh, an anchor. If we're pointed on one of these, uh, we have the other anchor slotted. Uh, six five. What a whiff from from Will. Would, so many pointing rolls and at least numbers that would cover the nine and instead does just about nothing. Uh, nothing to do with that really other than hit in the six down and really awkward roll for him. Unable to consolidate his racing lead. That's going to likely bring Victor back into this game, sending a third checker back. And now they're pretty equal and similar game plans too. Four one. What is this? Just step up to the best anchor. This uh, 23 to 22 looks really weird. I'm not sure when I would ever do that. Um, I would probably find the double coverage up to the 20. I'm not sure what makes that better. I guess it makes us less likely to be attacked. I don't know. I struggle to make a strong argument, but there must be a lot of tactics. If you go through the rolls, you can find that some set of them works better. Certainly pointed on head less often here, I think, in a in a solid way, but I'd rather make a bid for the better anchor. You just make a bid for two Oga K anchors the other way. 4-2 plays nicer after this. Favorite to make an advanced anchor himself, and he plays both up, and they have a fairly even race mutual holding game now. Uh, Victor's also going to very soon want to get his checker back on the 24 moving. Goes ahead and does that right now and blocks the double sixes joker. Six four is just going to run around. Um, we don't love letting our opponent escape a back checker with tempo, but what else is there in this position? It's just burying behind the anchor. So best move we have available. Three one, another whiff. Probably switch to the three point instead of we keep a nice point slotted instead of starting the weaker two point. And place the two instead. 5-3 is going to cover a blocking point for Will. Nice nice roll for him. Three two. Maybe we slot the three and make the two. The other option is again to slot the one point. I really don't think we want to give up any points yet though. So, um, Oh, this is an interesting way to play it. He's going to look at covering the two. Challenge his opponent with a weaker board. 
to hit with an escaping two and leave a bunch of returns. I don't mind it. Uh, shows up reasonably close, but not the right idea, and better to just play quiet. The six to three switch to the deuce keeps the most positive or high points slotted. So he gets to clean up his board later. Three one. Gonna stay a probably simple and quiet game. I think most likely just eight to four. Again, some purity is valuable. So he's gonna look at playing all the way to the deuce to unstack and keep the best distribution, but I think putting your checker on a better point is more important. And look at this, I'm wrong. Eight to seven, six to three wins out somehow. Some blend of both plays. Interesting. Not sure what the merit of that one is. Um okay, chooses to switch off the eight to make the four. And slot the ace once again. Better to instead keep the better points slotted. But uh, these are pretty small. Putting checkers on the ace and deuce is kind of forever. We're going to have to cover it. And now he's ended up with the two point instead of the three point, And we'll end up with the ace point instead of the three point as well. No decisions for Will there. Just playing behind with the six. And then the least destructive or the only ace doesn't give up a point. Five, three... Well, I don't think we're going to cover the ace twice. Um, so he's going to volunteer. Should have just cleared from the seven. Okay. Close plays, though, with two blots behind. Nothing really to fear about being hit with the two. So I like the tactics that he found there. That might come out best on plus plus. Two one. Another checker on the four. What other two do we have? If we could find a bold play to make, maybe we would with a four point board to the two. I despair on the six is valuable, but that's a dead checker. I'd rather keep them live and have a chance of spending aces. And Will rolls double twos to find a little space in the position. I think he'll likely want to make the four point and prepare for contact with this. I think they're both going to need a board for contact to resolve this game. Doesn't look too likely that either can just escape quietly to a race. Um, but this is a little more freedom and a little better chances of uh, of escaping with only fly shots. It also takes some pressure off of Victor's position, though, and allows him to, to break the 11 point a little more naturally and use that as builders instead. So I think, yeah, I think the blending of all game plans would ask us to stay on the 18 and make the four point along with it, improve our board. We have too many points and something's going to go next roll after this, but I think it's the right idea in, uh, in a mutual holding game like this. And double fives. That is not a good roll for Victor. Starts to bury checkers. Gets a lot of pips in the race, but he's going to struggle to bring those pips home. And six five. Just leaves a single black out, uh, blot out to uh, control the outfield. I was thinking he wouldn't want to touch those with such a deficit in the race, but he's actually pretty close and still contains well here. And now that Victor is completely destroying his position, Will has some interesting thoughts. Showing the match. I'm not sure if he had a cube there yet. I think Victor's just still racing fine, so um, okay to play there. Um, what can we do with this 4-3, though? We can go cover the ace and invite Victor to hit with the 3. I like this idea. I have a 4-point board. Um, the 3 is actually duplicated to cover, too. Uh, we really don't want to allow Victor's 5s to play by giving up the 10 points, so we're going to play pure, make a nice board, and, and see what he wants to do on hitting 3s. 6-5 finally springs a check over Victor. I think that's going to continue to direct shot territory, but it could just clean up a blot from the 6. And now finally with the shot, Will has some volatility in the position and a reason to think about sending the cube, so he's going to slow down. If he hits with the 2, he's going to lose his market. The question is, when he doesn't hit, is he still winning? Um, Victor's made some good progress here, so not clear. And he's going to miss a really big cube here, okay? Enough gammons that he wins. Um, and I don't think this is score-based either. I think this is a, would be a cube for money. So a surprising miss for as sharp of a player as Will is. Um, but misses that volatility cube in the end game here. And uh, does the three hit? I don't think so. I think we're just camping on this position if we're Victor. Cleaning up the blots and maybe taking an opportunity later. Hoping to roll a set. And now there's nothing for Will. He's glad he didn't send the uh, the cube there. 
Six starts of points, and seven to six seems the best. And double threes is finally going to escape to the race for Victor, saving this position completely. So Will dodged a bullet not sending the cube for the time being. Two checkers to the five. Yeah, we're going to go for distribution with that ace. That seems strong. And can he, with all the wastage, can he claim this game? Decides no, and he's going to miss a large cube as well. Clearly ahead in the race quite a bit. Um, thinks his wastage is too much or his lead or something here. But... Yeah, I would have spent some time thinking about that cube. I'm not sure why he just rolled past it. Picked up another three pips. Maybe he misevaluated the race last time. I'm not sure what's going through his head right here, but this looks like a fairly simple racing cube and probably a monster pass now. Okay, yep. Will is going to have to let this go, and I think he'll be able to figure this out with wastage as well. Yeah, we do have a skin for the board that matches the actual board now. I think actually someone named Justin Cluster made that, so thank you to him. Also helped us with the dark mode mods for XG uh, for streaming purposes. And Will's going to let that go. Victor's going to add another point to his lead. I had 11 away, 16 away now. Six five run to start for Wilcox. So Victor is going to split to create contact with that racing deficit. Five three is going to create the first point of structure. Small board advantage for Will along with his racing lead and checker escapes. Five two is just going to escape a checker and yeah contain from the eleven I think. We were ahead in the race or something like that. We want might want to clean up 10 to 8, but here we need the flexibility. 2 to 1. Um, besides automatically that's coming down, I might think about playing up to the 24. And he's just going to slot with it, which I feel like is the wrong strategic idea here. Uh, ahead in the race and with the checker escaped already, you don't want to lose those advantages. Um, gets away with it. 6 is going to cover, I do believe, and 3 is probably just going to come down with it. Oh, should step up and try to escape. Once again, looking for that opportunity to run. 5-3 is going to make a board point, and Victor catching up in this game quickly. Looking pretty strong. Very symmetric positions. This one checker shifted in the outfield. Five in to reduce fly shots. He could play the 13 to 8. Oh, he could completely clean up, it looks like. That's an idea, too. Instead of the four down. Okay. Worth preserving the race. That's very interesting. Uh, we're going to block the sixes out. So we're going to start with eight to seven with two of them. And I think this must just uh, advance to a three five fly. Oh, yeah. We can stay back here for the three six and play six to five. Now 3-5 and 3-6 are good for Will. 2-1 uh, makes a point. Very strong roll for him. Takes the board advantage back. Creates a solid 4 prime. 6-2 is a perfect roll for Victor. Hits a shot. And Will's going to have to perform to stay in this game. 4-5 is performing. Hits from the roof and now Will's dominating this game and likely to have a cube on his roll. But Victor enters and comes around, and I think he has enough to survive this by a long shot, depending on the play he finds. Um, I think just coming around and trying to only have one checker to deal with seems quite quite worthwhile. Yeah, just plays it around. Will probably still has a threatening cube trailing in the match. Shots are huge. Victor is relatively primed, but he's primed as well. So Victor somewhat clearly has play. Um, if this is a cube, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets missed. It's a difficult one to send without being able to see how you're going to resolve your back checker situation in the near term. Um, I suppose maybe the biggest market losers then are 3-6 and 3-5, and he needs to send on the strength of those. And he does. He finds the cube, okay? Sizable cube. 
Probably still good at money, I think. Yeah, yeah. Borderline for money and really big at the score. And Victor sees the counterplay for sure with uh, Will's checker strap trap back on the 24. But takes some time to think about it. Pretty good shot for Will coming around. Um, but not all over yet. This just increases the gamins for sure and still has to spend some time escaping that back checker. But has a lot of time from the midpoint in that 10-point checker to, uh, to play around doing that. I think maybe just no shots in the outfield unless we want to prioritize making the bar, but it, it looks pretty nice to me to just play into the six and 13 to eight, not have blots to deal with in case we get attacked very soon when Victor enters. And focus on escaping that checker now. He's an ace or a three to step up. Double fours isn't going to do it. So he's going to go for the loose hit and win a few more gammons when this plays out and bring a checker in one way or another. The nine doesn't play so nice with the three, so we don't mind breaking it, but this is less blots. And hoping to avoid a two for sure. Victor can't perform, and most rolls are going to do something productive for Will. Three ace. Uh, oh, no dilemma for him. Just makes the ace point immediately instead of stepping up. Um, I do want to escape the prime as well, but being hit is too costly. Okay. And this is a feature, I think, as well, when you're blitzing that uh yeah yeah he might be able to switch somehow here the switch six to two actually looks kind of nice um and i was about to talk about how we can roll through even when we can't escape the prime if he crashes and loses the six point at some point he still is a long way from losing the game victor might not be able to enter before he can escape still still has some time leaves himself kind of two things to do having to attack potentially on the deuce point okay three six is a great shot we're going to get escaped. Could have closed out, but more important to get that back checker moving. Victor enters on the two. He will be hitting loose and still a huge favorite to close the board out. 5-3 will do it. And likely to win a gammon to nearly equalize this match. We'll just be trailing one point after this game in most scenarios. Unless some sort of disaster happens in the bear off. Yeah, 11 to 2 is fine. We don't like to get out on the outside. I think this is just going to shuffle checkers inside. What's up, Are you um, I don't know. I'm probably okay. But you can ask Mark about it if you want. You know. Um, this is, looks a little too awkward. Two days is really the best we can do, huh? I would have assumed... Oh, Victor's going <laughs> to take a shake. <laughs> Six five is going to clear from the rear. Four two is likely to clear another point, but it does put quite a stack on the ace. Um, but it's going to be long term safest, I think. Uh, taking the checker offs looks pretty nice too, but I, I think I'm clearing the five point here. Uh, yeah, plays run really close. Do we, we don't win any more backgammons. We just win a few more gammons by taking the checker off. Okay, I'm not sure how that results occurs. Hard to imagine. That Victor can enter and sort of race off the gammon somehow if we're not careful here, apparently. And clears instead, that seems like a very understandable play for me. Surprised to see that difference. 
Victor has another five, and we'll see if he enters quickly if he does save the gammon as a result. 6-2 is going to clear from the rear again. Maybe it actually ends up odd quicker than it looks like is a problem with it. 4-2. Um, Fans again. Stays for the shot. Should Victor roll a big... Or er, will roll a big set. 6-3 clears from the rear again. And a fan. And two big numbers, three and higher, that aren't a set. Okay, dodges that. He's going to choose to even out with the 2-1 to one and make sure no sets leave shots next roll. Victor's going to escape the backgammon. Almost certainly that gammon we discussed. Ninety nine point six percent gammons and point oh two percent winning chances. That's cool. Point three percent never happens, does it? Six five four two. I rolled a 4 1 at some point. Okay. Yeah, that's, okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're okay. And, yeah, and you uh, 6 3 for Victor. You have 6 3? Yeah. yeah, it's it's on the table. Yeah. It's already done. Okay. And, okay, you play it on the yeah, Victor rolls a 6 3 and we're caught up. He's just catching up on a transcription error. To, they're good now. 5 1 is 2 off. And is Victor going to resign his 0.2% chance of saving a gammon? I agree. Not worth his time. <laughs> He's too rich to roll that. <laughs> Six five. Six five, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I forgot to do that. It's getting used to your taking care of it. Or two point to open. Nice start for Victor. 11 away, 12 away. Always split in response to those pointing rolls to challenge the 8 point. Double sixes. Gonna threaten to win this game pretty quickly for Victor. Will's gonna need to anchor up, make a board point, something, or he's gonna be a lot under a lot of pressure with the cube here. 5 2 does not do that. Um, I think this is a pass, yeah. And we can see on the evaluation, it doesn't matter what he chooses. When he doesn't have as good of a board, is split, doesn't have an anchor, just got to let that early double sixes go. Not sure. I guess I guess the 24 to 22 at least bids for an advanced anchor. I'm not sure why that's better. My, my instinct would have been eight and four. Yeah, Bob pointing out that that resign hurts his PR, but they aren't playing for PR, fortunately. Which is uh, a thing. It's it's fun to talk to Victor about um, PR competitions and situations like that. He's not a guy that really likes that format or thinks you know too much of it, which I think is really interesting to look at his BMAB PR then and realize that he's playing real tournaments the way that he would to adjust to win the most he can without concerning himself with maximizing decisions or anything like that and is still one of the i think three super grandmasters in the world just got promoted to that title there might be more but him and michi just got promoted when they created a super grandmaster or sorry no grandmaster zero i'm sorry mochi's the only super grandmaster but i think there are two grandmaster zeros as a result of the new bmap ratings um and his is just a very like one of the most true Grandmaster Zero's out there for sure. Not playing for the rating at all and just has it. Uh, stepping up and challenging. So when, when you'd get a direct, you can make the five along with it. Chooses to play down with from the ten instead. Uh, solid play as well. Not really his style, but yeah, those of us that have studied the second rolls are aware of that one. Victor, not one of those people either.
Double twos. What's the best we can do with this? Yeah, just bring down to the nine. This makes a lot of sense. Building nicely. Oh, Hideaki is a GM zero as well. I thought he was. I had, that name came to mind right away. But I remembered Victor for some telling, reason telling me about him and Michi and didn't mention Hideaki. I blame him. 4-2. Our opponent has an anchor. We're under a lot of pressure, but we need to be split as well. I don't see a quiet play that keeps us much alive. Um, yeah, if you want to jump on, that's fine. Yeah. Ryan Rebella joining us. Did Back you win again. quickly or lose quickly or what no, happened? No, no. So what happened was I had a match scheduled for tonight. Yeah. Uh, my opponent and I agreed to play it before dinner. Okay. So I won. Oh, nice. Well so done, my dude. next match scheduled for tomorrow night. Oh, cool. Tomorrow night? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to play tomorrow yeah, morning. I got a buy and then I won and then I won again. Oh, very nice. Okay, okay. Is this thing even on? Looks yes. Like okay. Yes, you're on. 4-2. Um, and now Victor's considering his cube... After having a better board, not ahead in the race, has the anchor and yeah, Will doesn't. It's got a, it looks like lots it's of difficult. threats, but I don't know how decisive they are. Oh, the uh, your head's 7 5. And he is going to send the cube on the volatility. And yeah, very close and finds the right decision there. Very well played by Victor. 4 2 hits and then plays 8 4, I guess. The lack of anything better to do. Yeah, all these, we've been seeing a lot of 8-4 plays. I always struggle with those. I don't know if I would have made that or not. Ugly. There's and a fan, loss. this is certainly a market losing sequence. 10 away, 12 away. 4-3 should make a point. Not the point he had in mind, but it'll do. Come on, Will, he's got this. 5-4. <laughs> okay, 1-3 is not bad, it survives. That's a nice. That's a really nice play, and you played it fast. Just leaving the A shot to have a little bit of priming potential. It would have taken me a, a while to realize that that was the best play, and I might even got it wrong anyway. But he found it like instantly. Which what is, a shot which is from amazing. Victor! Just instant five prime. Aces is amazing. Ooh, huge improvement. Now it's like a 50-50 game if he's missed. Uh, I don't know if it's 50-50 stuck back if on he's the 23. Missed? Oh, it is. Trust me. And I, I think there's still quite a strong he, he, advantage he, he, for Victor. He, he, is a bunch more Only 56, potential. surprising, okay. Out of time. Has to leave the anchor. Double fives. Five, now, now, five now doesn't it's not do enough. Game anymore. That's a bad roll. I'm pretty sure he's got to keep the 10 point and just play, uh, make the 3 and then slot the ace, but I, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Ian wants to know who you played that agreed to play before dinner. Eric Peterson. Oh, yeah. You'd love to get out and do some things in Monaco. I don't know why that's surprising, though. The schedule is so wide open that why wouldn't you play for dinner and just have the night off? That seems awesome. I would prefer to do that as well. Make the 12-point. XG likes these 12-point plays. I don't know why it's, it's such a good point to have. It's It doesn't do much at all, but it's XG's preferred play, so I might as well make it. It's closer to coming home. Does it? It might eventually block double fives. Yeah, this feels like it contains more. Hard to see that one for me too. I'm not sure. Four one. Okay. What does he do with this now? Is hit and lift might be the best play. No, no. You want to hit and lift. I don't want to break the five point. That's a fun idea, and it comes in really close. It's not a play that I would ever consider. I don't think. <laughs> This this looks like the most natural play to me, and it would be the one I would find. But it's it, this is not an easy position to find the best play in. Against such a strong board, I'd probably find the seven six seven three and just give up a little bit of containment. But that's uh, also feels like resigning the game. It's tough to do and not play for a win somehow. Um, we don't give up. We do give up quite a few more gammons. So I think this is like a match influence, a match score influence play too. He's gonna find this one. It's, it's a slight error, but it's impressive that he makes it. Yeah, it's not a play that most of us are looking no, for. No, not a for play sure. a lot of people would find at all. He gets yeah, Eric for Peterson it, is naturally. still into pool billiards. Stays primed with the checker back, though, so a little Six, little bit five, of... Five, now what? Oh, yeah, we're just... 
Are we attacking again? What's the use now? Uh, I don't now? think so. I don't see any reason yeah, to. Yeah, now that we're six prime, I, I we're think, kind I think of you probably got to break the eight up. point, and there's some cracking numbers. Maybe like double fives. It's not great. How about five two? That can play. Yeah, and th they're this, pretty this close. play also has potential, to be fair. So, what can happen here? Victor can enter with double twos or some two six. There are some cracking rolls, okay. Two six okay. cracks, that's right. So he found enough big to go for the win here. Two five. Uh, two five, oh, not just one of them. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was just enough to get the two and play of the ace, so we can just hit. That's a pretty strong play. Two one, okay. Now you got to play three two. This game's over. You just don't want to lose a gammon. Yep. You can still hope that he cracks with some small set. A little bit of hope. Not much, though. No. 5-2 just escapes naturally. And now Will's focus is to uh, reclaim his board and hope to have contact from the 23 point later. Would love to get a checker moving from that 23 as well as soon as possible. So kind of rooting for Victor to speed up here, I think. Both these guys are playing really well, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're playing real sharp in this match. And, okay, Victor's going to look at just pre-clearing. The thing about this is that I, I think we want to take a chance at cracking Will further. So I'm inclined to just play to the five. This guy again? Nice, we got Mate on film now, too. You're on camera, bro. Petting your friend on the beard. <laughs> uh, double you have way five. more clothes than the Speedo, though. Yeah, yeah, good. you can get up a close-up on there if you want. Look at that camera smooch. Six, five, leave the, the fans at home shot. need it. Just don't kick anything, please, okay? <laughs> yes, later. You can kick me later. Oh, Tara's coming to warn him that you're not allowed to be. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> We're just having fun, Tara. What happened? Oh, Mate like walked into the shot and stuff. And so Tara freaked out. Ruining their production. It's not a funny joke. <laughs> Four three, I like for distribution though. Playing six to five to uh, pre-clear the six makes some sense too. Probably creates some really bad fives early. Maybe not though. I'm not sure. Ryan's looking for the cash action in the room. Clears the eight safely. Will really needs to get a checker moving. And can't, but hasn't killed any new checkers and has kept a five-point board at least. Double twos is going to start clearing points, I believe, from the rear. Nothing better to do with twos usually in this game. Three one seems okay here. Interesting. I would have thought five to three to prepare, even though it leaves some shots. No, we no. We typically three, hate putting checkers behind the anchor. There must be, must be worth just delaying the shot somehow, even though it's six five leaves the shot as well. I guess a stack of five is not too attractive on the three-point either. Three-two. Has he improved his scenario with this? This is awkward. Take Gonna the take a checker off. off now. Six-two comes out and comes down. I guess. Yeah. Okay. A thirteen to five is actually better to keep the anchor. Interesting. Yeah. I, don't got know. Some... I, 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 I never know what to do when there's just keep the anchor plays or run off. I don't know. Yeah, those are tough. The ones where you're supposed to bury another checker. I guess maybe part of this one though is that like Will's game plan is almost certainly not to remake the six somehow with his lack of checkers. You know, it takes some serious luck to land there. So Four, I think maybe one. XG is just kind of recognizing how lucky that's you unlikely that scenario here, is and keeping the contact shot? instead. Um, For a bit more gammon, Vig? I don't it see does get us not. one checker closer, but it makes our best rolls kind of worse. So yeah, I think I might go for the bear off. Oh, you did. Yeah, I, did. I like it, but I'm not sure. Certainly not sure. 5-1, and he does end up getting to make the six-point board, as unlikely as it was. Yeah, he's going to get punished, watch. 
And he's ready if Victor should roll a set here, but no. most of the time as well, Victor's just going to end up, uh, or Will's just going to have to go before he can stay to uh, punish Victor's peeling play anyway. So I think that's part of the logic of that play as well. Yeah, people in the chat saying two players we'd really like to see in the UBC. I agree. Everyone's got to get on Victor's nerves until he agrees finally. No, he, he hates the UBC. Yeah. Victor's a money game player, and that's all, he's, that's all he really <laughs> ever wants to be. He plays tournaments, though, and likes that, and sure, doesn't sure. mind having a beam ab rating and all these things. It's just, uh, I don't know, he needs more of a reason to get he, out he's, to he's UBC. Told, he's told me he really he has no intention of ever playing in the UBC. Yeah. So I'll just have to change the name, and then maybe he'll come out. <laughs> and got it. Oh, Eight away, twelve away. They're gonna take a short break. Okay, okay. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Are you gonna run off for a bit? Always appreciate the help. <laughs> I thought people were loving that. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to see Tansy out there, too. He's been playing really well. I had a tough tournament in Chicago for his state. It was interesting to talk to him about... Um, he recognizes, like, his game's very sharp, but he realizes he'd have to go to a different level of focus and study to catch up with someone like Mochi and just doesn't really have the time in his life to go after that right now. Um, but it's, it's cool to hear such high-level players talk about what it would take to be competitive in that format and be so aware of, like, Strength is strengths and weaknesses of their game. Um, but one of the best in the U.S. for sure. That's It's also interesting to uh, talk to players like Mochi, who the UBC format is the only reason he's found a reason to like improve the technical level of his game as much as he has in the last few years. There's a really point of diminishing returns at like, a world championship tournament between playing uh, a 3.0 and a 2.8 or a 2.2, whatever it is, you still win a ton more matches than your opponents and not gaining too much anymore. Um, but the UBC format, caring about the PR, forces him to try to play as accurate as possible and have another reason to study deeper again. Um, so really interesting stuff there. <laughs> Am I playing in this tournament? No, I played the the warm-up open tournament. I won my first three matches, then lost two in a row and busted out of that. Ryan ended up, Ryan Rebello ended up winning that. And I think it was, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name now. I know his name. I know exactly what he looks like, the face. Um, that one, the uh, resident of Macau and wanted us to make sure we had the flame if, or flag if we ever got him on stream for this tournament. Um, but yeah, that was a really fun tournament. And then for all the... The main event stuff, I'm just here on commentary, working all day. What were the PRs in the high roller final? I I don't know, but um, they were playing style, and it was, it was not like a super accurate match like this, Victor and Wilcox, but it was really exciting. The, their two styles contrasted really well as well. So, I mean, the turnarounds in that game were just constant and huge. Uh, Manny tending towards some conservative and cleanup kind of plays and missing bold opportunities. And and uh, Joseph always willing to go for the win regardless of the score or the gammon situation, finding DMP plays all over the place that other players might be afraid to make. And the contrast just made swings all over the place, and it was really exciting. Super fun stuff. I loved watching that one. Nice stickers on the laptop. Thank you. I think they're nice too, courtesy of Simon mostly. One you might not recognize, but, you know, appreciate him. Is there a chart where we can see how everyone is doing? Yeah, I think the brackets are in the description of this video. So we can see all the results as far as they've been updated online so far. Is Wilcox from Costa Rica? Yeah, yeah, I think he spent time living in the U.S. as well, but I think he's lived in Costa Rica for a while now. 
Uh, Ian thinks the guy that won played in the fours. Um, maybe for some reason I didn't think so, but that could be. Thought he was. Um, they were both. I think XG didn't like either of their cube plays, so I thought he was a little bit higher than that. Um, but really not completely certain. Diminishing returns below a six. I'd be surprised if that's actually the case. I, I, I know the results you're pointing to, but it really feels like 5-4 range. You can win a lot of tournaments. Uh, maybe I see less six players winning tournaments, but then again, I there aren't that many six players. It's not a place that people hover. A lot of people like less study and just like principles that they've had their whole lives can play around the eight average maybe. See a lot of players in that range, eight to ten or something. And then when you're studying, people tend to get down to six and below. Um, so, yeah. Lots of players in the fives, it feels like. I think tomorrow the streaming is going to start at... 2 p.m. our time again uh, with another round of the Open. Don't know what that matchup is going to be yet, of course. Um, I'm not sure what our schedule is going to be for the rest of it, but, I mean, 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. you can count on for for Open rounds. And then I don't think there's as many, you know, the Super High Roller jackpots over, so I'm not sure what other side events we would stream at that time. But we have the option of, like, taking... I don't know. You might get to see some speed gammon or something like this. We'll see. Someone needs to bring me a plate of pasta. No, I, I sprinted home up the, the hills of Monaco to eat some chicken and drink some coffee at about 5.30 and got back here just in time for the 6 o'clock stream. And that's good for me for today. Two AM wherever Maui is in Hawaii, I, I presume. That would make a lot of sense. Who chooses the music playing when the video streaming starts? I bet that's Wilson. My money's on. Probably. You're a fan, Bob? I've been eating more sandwiches than normal. Bread does me well here in uh Overseas. I don't eat very much bread in the US though. Doesn't work for me unless it's very specific. My birthday celebration consisted of doing streaming. So if you watched that, you saw it. And then I got to bed reasonably early last night too, so I could do my lecture in the morning. So a simple day, but how else would I spend it? I don't know. I've never been a crazy birthday celebrator. It's probably pretty expensive to celebrate a birthday in uh, Monte Carlo as well. But I appreciate everyone's well wishes. Got a lot of messages and people stopping me in the playroom. That's always nice. Oh, other Bob is upset with Wilson for the bumper music. Okay. Sorry, Boomer. <laughs> Yes, I on streams we're always choosing, you know, copyright infringement, free kind of free music, but I don't know, something exciting. How's the coffee going here? I brought the Kalita Wave and some filters and enough ground coffee to get me by in my uh, Airbnb, but I'm not able to brew things in the playroom because it's a little too far away. So mostly just doing it for myself and Mate occasionally. Um, but it's going well. Tasting delicious. I also got to stop by some places in uh, in Frankfurt and Nice and pick up some coffee to take home with me. So excited about that. Why does Thomas Christensen not participate in the tournaments? I don't know. I think last time I saw him and talked to him, he was pretty focused on poker and doing well at that. There's, of course, more of a living potential there. Um, but yeah, one of the best players in the world if he just wants to be and has incentive to do it. Um, so I hope to see him out at some tournaments again someday. Fun guy to hang out with too.
<laughs> Jealous all you living in Hawaii. I had a friend that did that for a while and visited and seems um I could do that. I could live there. It's in the back of my head to live in Portugal. That's still possible. But being in Wisconsin near family is really nice too. Struggle to imagine leaving that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Future is wide open for me when I get home from this tournament for sure. Got to figure that out and we'll be somewhere new by the end of August probably. Uh, I am a fan of the pour over. The Kalita is a little harder to brew with for me. I use the V60 at home. And lately I feel like I've been brewing my best cup with a Chemex. But I left mine at the Chicago tournament, unfortunately. And I have a large brewer at that that brews like one liter batches really easily. So it's easier to make for a lot of people. Um, but anything like that. And then I also have the Flare 58 for making espresso at home. That's all my gear. That's my favorite stuff. Why is Dirk not playing? I'm not sure why he didn't travel out to this. Um, you know, only so many tournaments that everyone can play out for or get out to. No one's traveling the circuit professionally making all their their money that way you know so um there is good incentive a lot of the players that travel out here also get to teach a lot of lessons with certain people that live out in monaco and things like that um so it's a nice kind of business trip for for some of those players too um so i presume that you know maybe that's just not the case for dirk someone could hook me up with some costa rican arabica I can't remember if what the varietals are. Is that what I want? I don't know. Maybe there's some good co uh, coffee out of Costa Rica for sure, but I'm picky, so I'm, I'm always afraid to ask people for that. Head to Mexico to live, Robert says. Okay, that's a... Well, if I move out of the country, it would be nice to live in Mexico, but Portugal's on the radar just because a bunch of the Galaxy guys live there. So it's possible that I would go hang out to be closer and collaborate more with them. Ooh, recommendations for books after Basics to Badass and 501 Essential Problems. Um, I still, I don't know if it's the most current one, but I really loved Trice's Backgammon Bootcamp coming up. It's got this odd blend of uh, very good for, for beginners and also technical enough to still learn from today when I read it. Um, all of Mark's books are solid. The Cube Action books are pretty solid too. Um, Cube Like a Boss, a lot of people like. The one that I spend the most time with still is the Cube Action 1000, just for all the references and reading through. Nice uh, visual way to look at a lot of cube positions. Black Rifle Coffee sounds um, intense for me. Oh, Copy Luak. Okay, I still haven't tried that. I've heard good things. Heard bad things about the treatment of animals around it or something like that, and people have been trying to find other like lactic fermentation processes to reproduce that, but uh, super interested. It seems like a weird thing to try, but I have to at some point. Oh, cool. Robert got to stay in Portugal for a while. Yeah, I visited there in 2019. There's always uh, Chivo runs a warm-up tournament before Monte Carlo, and I loved it there. Um, fairly cheap, warm. The ocean's like freezing cold, which is perfect. I love being able to jump in the cold water while burning in the sun. Dutch Bros being the best chain in coffee in the States. Uh, it seems like 100% not a chance, unless just somehow they've escaped me and I've never gotten to try that. Um, they're not on my radar. Best in the States, probably like objectively in competition speaking, as far as I know, I think is Onyx. Um, I don't order from them all that often. They, but I mean, they make some really nice stuff, some interesting like off batch, just like one offs that are really expensive by the ounce and definitely make the best coffee that I've ever tasted. Uh, one particular Colombian that they make yearly and seasonally sells in just little four ounce batches. That's awesome stuff. I brought a bunch of sweet bloom from the U S from Colorado though. Very good stuff. Justin Knoll, not a fan of the poop coffee. Everyone thinks you're missing out, man. Can't stand coffee. That's even worse. It tastes delicious. Okay. 
Uh, I'm not sure if Jim is advertising regulations on coffee in Costa Rica as a positive or a negative. Not sure why it'd be 100% Arabica. I guess it's better than Robusto. Okay. Victor leading in the match still opens with a 6-4 point. Interesting. Usually you're inclined to run there. Um, something he likes about that positionally. Wilcox responds with maybe the best response to that in the double fours to anchor up and neutralize, but great response from Victor, too, with the double sixes to have a big racing lead. Uh, this time, not going to have any early cubes coming. Is going to have to escape from the 18 first in a mutual holding game now. We're back in action. Yes, the 8 away, 12 away, I remember saying before break, so score is still correct. Keen loves coffee because he's awesome. Oh, open to see some. Yeah, there's a ton of uh, backgammon names that'll be at the UK Open for sure. Like all the awesome UK players. What him out here? Sean Williams was runner-up in the Open here. I imagine he goes out to those tournaments. Not 100% certain, though. Had a shout-out to the club in UK somewhere. Oh, cool. You guys are going to make it out to the UK Open for your next tournament now. I remember talking about what the next would be. Okay, so Victor took the tactical five opportunity to leave, got hit, and is on the bar now. And Wilcox, what is the best way to consolidate this advantage? He's going to have a lot of cubes in his very near future. and But it doesn't look like there's a perfectly safe way to convert it on this roll. I think... 13 to 7 looks like very nice offensively, but maybe this reduces shots and just creates the opportunity to get a cube home most often. So I see a lot of merit to this play. Um, and that's what he's trying to prioritize now is, is creeping up on just claiming this game. Someone says to wear a shirt like that. I didn't see the rest of the story. And yeah, 18 pip lead, single checker back, outboarded. Everything points to a fairly clear pass. And so I think Wilcox's decision is too good or not. Uh, how often he might not have a roll. And with the open five point, I feel like claiming the game looks a little stronger. Gonna send it. Insta pass from Victor. And we're gonna see the next game. Eight away, 11 away. Oh, and I didn't see what the correct play on the double sixes was. I couldn't see it through the transcription scene. But if it jumped quite a bit on uh, on PR, then yeah, okay. Found the wrong idea. I saw the logic to that play for sure. That's interesting. I wonder what was best then. Maybe he just needed to play offense after all. Oh, cool. People want to know how they can buy my book in advance. I don't think they've started... We talked about whether or not we could do pre-sales. Oh, after the sixes, by the way, it looks like very blitzy position for Will. And so Victor needs to not split here and plays down. Good that he has that. And the two up is actually an option. That's that's surprising that it's even close. Not on my radar here. Three, two could make a point and challenge Victor to leave the anchor, but it's a 24 point. Can you really do that? Yeah, I think out of time, you got to get your back checkers moving. This makes a lot of sense to me. Um, as soon as I find out how I can do pre-orders on my book, I'll let you guys know, though. I've had a few close friends and such ask. I'm really excited to publish that. Uh, once again, this looks like with a checker in the air, we're going to switch to the five, have huge blitzing threats, and even at eight away, 11 away, could end up with a strong cube after out of this with, uh, with Will's gappy position. There are 11 checkers in the zone, too. Yeah, on a fan, this looks very scary. Oh, I didn't notice he ended up playing 13 to 7 with two or not sure. Make the two is maybe the option. That could be two. Really not sure. And he does fan with a 5-4. And Victor's got to think this one through. But I mean, pointing on the head is going to lose the market by a mile, right? I don't think I'm using the score to adjust negatively here. Will does have some prime and structure in front and could challenge Will or Victor to escape. But I just... 
I think this is, he's got the race too, which is going to be a bit confusing, but wow, just the purity of the position, the option to maybe make a five prime, point on ahead and put two in the air, perfect four point board. And Will's position is so impure that I really favor a cube, but not seeing the hint yet on this, so I'm not sure. And he rolls. Let's see what happens. Yeah, misses a sizable cube, it looks like here. Double aces is going to switch. This is likely to be a market loser. Just making the seven along with it seems fine. Oh, nine to seven for distribution. Weird. We can keep the eight. Okay. Yeah, still blocks the two point. The gammon threat was just so high there. Uh, Bob asking if my commentating has helped my play. I don't think so. Actually, occasionally it feels like I, I see some things more sharply when I work with another player, like commentators that are helping me notice plays that I wouldn't otherwise or something like that. Um, just being engaged with the game is helpful. But in general, it's like very much a, a different skill to think about how to communicate what's going on in the game, to me anyway, the way that I want to do it, um, than being good at the game. I think, I think I remember hearing Phil comment at some point that you can't be a, a very good player without being a good teacher first, and I actually feel completely the opposite. I think uh, at some point, yeah, if you want to be like the best of one of those, you have to pick one. Um, and there's like a player like Sander that has no clue how to teach the game and is one of the best in the world, you know? Um, so I think you play to your strengths either way. Four anchors, three likely just cleans up. I don't think the mobility is more worth it. And he's glad he didn't send the cube now. Will found a nice turnaround 2-6 from the bar. Keen says my book's going to be a bestseller. I hope so. Thanks, dude. You still have to buy it even though you got to read it. It's the rules. Um, ahead in the race, Will is, so he's got to fight for mobility and step up. Thanks for helping me edit it, by the way. I've had a few people look through it already and give feedback. 6-2. What is this going to do for Victor? Ouch. This looks like the thing that the position wants to do, but I have a really hard time letting go of my anchor here. And he apparently has enough better of a board that he can get away with this. Wow. And made that play pretty quickly. I'd have a very difficult time finding that one. I don't know what everything else is so destructive, but how do I leave my anchor when my opponent has such a blitzy position here? And I'm not really outboarding him that effectively. Double threes is going to remake it, so it works out. Um, very sharp play from Victor. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention Michi's books. I like those quite a bit, too. Those are great concepts and all those. I learned quite a bit from the endgame technique, opening concepts. I, I had some good ideas, but I like the way he structures the information. And the back checker strategy is really nice, too. Gave me some good ideas about holding games. But just the way that he communicates information is really good, too. Double twos, I think we want to keep our midpoint, find a way to start new points. Simple plays here, waiting for the contacts. No cubes available. Still a lot of work for Will to clear the midpoint with the gap on the five point. Not much racing chances for Victor, but plenty of contact with all those checkers behind. Yeah, Portugal tends to be the week before Monte Carlo. I've been to that one, so it was nice. Seven to two, yeah, I don't... I mean, of course, we don't like killing a checker, but our only way to, to not do that is to place 13 to 10, 3, which is just way too much against a five-point board. So we're going to have to do something like cover the ace. Interesting, though, the 7 to 2, instead of making it, we'd rather keep the spare on the 6 and start to clear a point we want to get rid of anyway. Okay. So XG is already tactically prioritizing uh, clearing points safely, getting there to the race, and doesn't care about 
the contact value of making an inner board point. That's just not the goal here. Oh, Cassidy's a no-no fan in the... Is that his name? Am I remembering that right? In the Michi books? Aces. Uh, Victor has... Wants to keep the contact. That's his main value. So advancing up 21 to 20 is not really an option. Finds that quickly. Six down and two. Will's going to keep playing safe. And we're getting to, uh, to the moment here. Victor's going to have to leave the mo uh, midpoint. Does he keep one checker for contact? Looks worth it. It allows aces to play a little safer. Uh, no, two down is actually a little bit better. These are always so close. But... Yeah, we want to not allow, have a direct shot when our opponent plays. So like uh, some sixes and fives and things like that to get one checker to the six or seven point must play nicer. But um, not important enough to volunteer the ace. Yeah, that role would have played a lot different for sure. So happy he didn't stay on the midpoint after that one. Five in and eight to seven, just waiting for the contact again. Oh, he can consider the 21 to 20 split now for extra contact. Oh, he passes up that opportunity. It looks so nice, too, with the blot behind. Dead checkers. Uh, so likely that there'll be a shot in the outfield. Um, those are tough plays to look for, but misses a tactical opportunity. Would have maybe regretted it some after this sequence, now that he's able to button up. So it feels like short-term thinking sometimes, hard to find. 5-3, we're just still... Last chance to... Uh, to safely wait for the shot before we have to leave off the anchor, break the board. And we're going to get a 9 to hit here. Probably hoping to run from the back if he doesn't hit that shot anyway to avoid breaking his board. 3-2 does neither and is going to have to break. We're going to take two checkers off the 6 most of the time. Um, often people like to leave it with the idea of remaking, but I think it's better for the immediate contact to clean up 6-4. to four. We've seen this a lot this weekend. And now Will's at his last chance to get the cube in. Most likely will bring that checker to safety. It's almost less clear whether Victor still has enough contact to take this, but with so many dead checkers behind, he can probably find this, even though it's quite borderline. Um, but yeah, Will's got problems of his own. This doesn't always come home cleanly, but the racing lead is just so big and so likely to resolve all contact on this roll that he's going to go for it. So, correctly found double and take. Playing nice and accurate again. Double fives, working towards clearing this position safely. Just one step away. Plenty of shot levers, though. 6-1, 6-2, 5-1, 5-2, 4-1, 4-2. And they all still leave a shot even if Victor leaves, so he's able to safely run away with that 5-1. And 5-2, here it is. Victor's last chance. Zero checkers off. And a 4 doesn't quite win, but it's going to get him most of the way there. Misses. Going to run to save the gammon. Tough to get back in this race. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the... I did talk a little bit about how commentary impacts my game and teaching and writing and all these things on, on my interview with Daniel Rivero on his Backgammon is Beautiful channel. Lots of cool stuff on there. Check that one out. I've got a YouTube channel where I do stuff, too. You can find me just Nick Blazer everywhere. People have been liking the, the Play and Explains on the Heroes site lately. Um, this game isn't completely dead, is it? Okay. Four rolls, four rolls. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it is. Okay, cool. Resigns it. Not worth the time anyway. Yeah, the interview with Mark Olson on uh, Daniel's uh, channel is pretty interesting lately, too. Or recently, too. Always nice to hear what he's up to. Always a million things. All right, we'll right back in this match again. Eight away, nine away, pretty even score. But Ben fighting from behind pretty much the whole way. 
hasn't had a match equity favored position quite yet, I don't think. Yep, double twos is going to make the structure. Three, two. Going to clean the blot up. It could make the 10 point. That's a little bit of a tricky decision, but escaping a checker probably worth a little bit more. Both of them still well under a 3 2. Cleanest match I think we've seen in the weekend. Yeah. I didn't get to see Zdenyek and Kazuki last night. Phil covered that one for me. Did a good job, I heard, too. Um, I don't know how sharp they played, but they're definitely capable of this kind of stuff as well. Oh, Bob, my idea was that um, it's not worth the time to roll for, like, uh, if you're a billionaire, for example, and you're playing backgammon for $1,000, is it worth playing for your 0.01% of potentially turning that game around? Maybe it's not worth the effort. Maybe you should just resign more. <laughs> okay. Phil's my friend. Be nice. He's good stuff. He's hilarious. He cracked me up. He was like, I think my first teacher in backgammon, too. He does a ton to uh, get people and get engaged with the game. It's cool to have him on commentary here and there, too. Oh, I got David Wells over by me here. How are you doing in the tournament, man? Uh, I'm alive. Okay. David Wells is alive. He looks alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Struggling a little. Went around okay. in second. Okay, okay. The second hit on the ace, surprising bit of an overplay while well, outboarded from Will. Looks very natural to just play down to the eight again and hit from 13 to four. But he tries to protect that hit to potentially be able to make the four point later. I think just the wrong idea in general when when you're outboarded. Um, here is the anchor more important or do we want to cover the 10? I think I'll take an offensive bit of structure. Can't afford to leave that double shot and just be behind in the game. David Wells agrees. Also with the blot on the ace, the key component. And Victor is ahead in the match, not in a relevant way that's going to affect the cube, but has a lead in this game. It's hard to see what the clear market losers are, um, except that Will's position is just pretty trashy. Splitting back against weaker structure with the uh, blot back on the ace. He's going to pause to think about whether he's ahead enough, potentially, or we're just fixing up the transcription. I'm not sure. But I think he's thinking about the cube. Yeah, he's on the clock. It feels early, but it doesn't feel unreasonable to me either. Definitely some market losers, right? Yeah, probably. Making the five point without a response would be a market loser. Making the five point without a response is a likely market loser. I can buy that. Uh, class of numbers to do that. Maybe anchoring's enough if our opponent doesn't anchor too. Um, so maybe any ace could be a market loser. And he does send the cube. And snap take from Will, of course. Didn't get to see the evaluation on whether or not that was correct. It looks like close. Yeah. 4-3 is likely just going to escape a checker and work on that racing lead. Not what he was hoping for, but not bad either. 5-1. Once we slap the ace, we often want to cover it. I don't see a more productive 5. And then I think we probably split to the 22. And try to make a bid for an anchor. He's a lot of outfield. Yep. And now that ace point is working for contact for a little bit, mostly neutralize the threat of this position. Oh, yeah, if you want to join us on commentary, David Wells, you can sit down by this microphone and turn it on. You want to do that a little bit? Uh, or are you I taking a break? Oh, David's about to play a speed match. Yeah, feel free to come back and say hi, man. We got a request in the chat for it, man. Who's asking for this? Oh, Ian Terry. I don't know if you know him. I know him. No, of him. Okay. <laughs> cool. 4-1, we're thinking about this. Yeah, I, I don't see many other options. What is he's considering running, I suppose. 
6-4 instantly hits in the outfield. Okay. Also notice that it points on head, but that must be better to send another checker back. Keep those two points as well. 2-6. Not bad. Not great. Can't move either back checker. And Will's turning this game around nicely. Gets the point on head now. Got a lot of threats of his own. And recubes are a little... Even at this one-point deficit, they start to matter quite a bit. Going to increase the take points some. And, yeah, does Victor need the tempo hit? He's still got an okay board. He has an anchor. Sure, why not? Yeah. Playing down leaves a direct six. Gets a really fortunate fan from Will. And back with the advantage in this position already, I think. Looks like beauty to hit and cover here, yeah. Not really the, I guess, switching to attack. Not the game plan we had in mind with the made bar, but it'll do. Double <laughs> aces is a brilliant turnaround here, too. Going to hit in the outfield. And on a fan, he's going to be shooting out a six again for the lead. It's a swingy game. <laughs> five, five. We'll keep him in this one, too. Yeah. This is how you win tournaments. You got to perform with the dice once in a while. Wells likes 10 and 8. Keep pressure on that back checker. Okay, I also looked at 23 to 13 just to uh, clean up a blot, but I... Yeah, there's some duplication he notices too. Okay, okay. Nice hit from the bar. Everyone's just rolling perfect every chance they get. 3-4 does not hit for once. Cleans up a blot though, not too bad. Takes a lot of pressure off of Victor's position. Will's not excited to hit on the three or the deuce. He might have to with a roll like this. Now he can make the eight, though. Okay, he just cleans up and makes the, yeah, the anchor. This seems pretty strong. I noticed the 14 to 8 linked up, but wasn't looking at the back checkers like it should have been. 4-3. Really looks like Victor wants to do something with his back checkers in this position. He's out of room everywhere else, but that looks like a lot of double shots and pretty scary to play this way. So this tempo hit on the ace buys in the most time. That's very interesting. Um, ahead quite a bit in the race. This is not an intuitive play to find. I don't know. Yeah. Tough for David too. Do you think you, what would talk you into this player? Would you end up just playing up to the 20, something like this? David Wells only sees uh, the same four that Victor found in either the 20 or the ace and would probably end up choosing the ace as well. Uh, for lack of options, apparently. 2-6, okay, this is going to force a checker to come into double direct range. Uh, looking good for Victor again. Five four hits if it wants to, but it can also cover. Maybe it should just cover and hit in the board. And hopefully preserve that double shot. Both play is pretty competitive. We can also clean up the blot after hitting, so that's got some merit to it as well. We don't hate being hit on the ace when we leave the blot there, so that I kind of, I know, I feel like Victor likes those kinds of plays a little better. Just kind of progressing, uh, a game around and going for less like, less like all in on blitz kind of positions like making it an ace point. I wouldn't be surprised to see him hit and continue to the midpoint. That's the play he goes with here. Just a little bit more solid. 2-3 is going to anchor up for Will. Bring a checker into the outfield and no more blitz. Lots of work to do for Victor to bring this home against two anchors now. 4-1, I think, is going to... It's nice to cover the ace for the tactical shots later. 13-8 doesn't accomplish too much. We got Ryan back here. I'm back, baby. 6-4, what does this do? Just cleans up some blots and tries not to get in trouble? Okay, seems reasonable. Really awkward position suddenly for Wilcox. What's going to go next? That's hard to see. Uh, for Victor, he just wants to run. 
twenty to fourteen, and thirteen to four is actually a little better to keep pressure on Will's position. That's interesting. Yeah, it does allow Will to just build safely and also just clear the the thirteen with no risk. Where um, before we were gonna have shots. Yeah, who is this guy? Yep. Will's just building and waiting, David says, and Victor's just trying to play home safely. So I imagine this goes to the Look the at this stick. play he's supposed to find. Why would this why would the five not clean up to the six? Because here? he's not he's, he might not even hit with the four anyway, right? And and it's just better for uh for uh, flexibility building purposes. Yeah, very true. And the other is to just slot the five. How do you like that play too? Not a very human consideration. Is that on your radar? No, I would not slot the five. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. See, now we can't hit. Yeah, 3-1. Better to build the board and wait for more improved contact later. So, very nice find from Victor. Pretty good at finding those heads-up situations. Nice, uh, consolidates nice. to the 11. Pretty good roll there. Any blunders lately? Uh, not too much. A few missed cubes, but they're they're playing sharp. Still both below three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, surprisingly, it's been mostly cube inaccuracies, I think. I think uh, Will might have had a double sixes that trying to creep on behind a cube found the wrong idea. I'm not sure. Didn't see the analysis on that for sure. <laughs> three, two, I think it's just going to play safe to the three now that Will has a five point board getting scarier. Five, two is going to slot. <laughs> Three one, the best we can do with this, I think, is make a bid uh clear the eleven now, but we could play safe and clear the six. Feels too early to that. Get home. Yep, reduce shots in advance, eleven to ten. The blot on the deuce is a little bit of an incentive to do this, but clearing the six is forever. Going to be a really hard job to not only get the 11 home, but the 8 home as well after we make a safe play like this. But it. Yeah, David pointing out that Will might have to go on this play. And so it feels nice to just wait a roll and let him come to make Will come to Victor. Um, but I think he's going to see that the damage of that, he's going to have trouble punishing that after he clears the six point, right? So. He's just going to have to go for this. Nice find. <laughs> Someone in the chat says Ryan was rolling the dice and checkers hyper aggressively and it was borderline rude. You got some feedback. I don't know if they're talking well, about Well, not everyone can be my fan. <laughs> Even Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo has some haters. So, uh. <laughs> oh, and he does clear the six after all, tricks himself into that play. Now what he's supposed to do. Sounds like a kind of Victor thing again. Plays conservative. I might even run through I the think back. Just from the back? A, this one, leaves a bunch of pointing play. numbers, so I don't really like this. Oh, it's a genius play. Wow, and this is instantly... Will just finds these complicated things with, like, no thought. It's really amazing stuff. I might want to leave a blot from the 18. I can see some excuse to do that, but wow. I guess he's still going to have... What a find. The swing on 6s, 6 3 6 aces. 6 is good already. Doubles are good already. So 6-1 and 3-1, though, were problems. Yeah. Very interesting. Shot. 6-2. How does it leave a you shot? Got, you got does to it play 11, for the hit? It three. can't. 11, yeah, I think you got to clear five. from the 11. Yeah. yeah. That's all Sorry, there is. So it's all twos and 4-3. And if he rolls this, he's, uh, he's about to win this yeah. game. Congrats again on the open win, Ryan, by the way. And your first tournament that you celebrated, not at all that I saw. Just wanted yeah, to see your hair as it is. played like a schlepper, that's for me. <laughs> More concerned with his uh, PR. stream PR. Hilarious. Oh, we got him. Double twos hits. Turns the game around. 
Probably um, just like this play, yeah, just keeping it safe in case you get hit. Trailing by. with only two checkers outside. Yeah. So on a miss, this looks like a claim and not like a too good kind of situation, anything like this. Send All back. right. 10-9 to 17. And Victor with some racing lead and still not all covers. Okay. Thinks about it for a moment and gives up. If and he would have took that, I would have went in there and uh, scolded him for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. 3 1 costs him. You just going to start out with the five point? Sure. Why not? <laughs> That's reasonable. <laughs> Got to spot him something. <laughs> no, no, no. Five two split to start. Six is hitting duplicated a little bit in the outfield on the bar point here, so the two's a little safer than usual. Um I think this looks like the disconnection idea enough to hit loose on the ace. Might not be an opening theme that Victor thinks about or uses much. Again, not like uh, super technical, going to make the second roll -y kind of plays. But he does find the reason to go ahead and step up. Maybe I'd, maybe I'd anchor with it. Maybe I would have anchored with it, but goes All for right. something bigger. 3-2 makes D11, I guess. Yep, when we get a chance to make outfield points, I think just we go for it. Just play it simple. But I have seen Will make a lot of like bolder plays here, hitting loose from the 8, something like this. I think this is his play B that he wants to consider. Just keep it simple. That's what XG likes, always. Those have been the main mistakes that Will's made. Has been some Oh, like, no, not this time. Look at this. He's, he's right to be thinking about it. Very close plays. Must have something to do with the blot back on the A's. Very interesting. 5-3 He's going to hit and probably just step up. I don't see anything better than just stepping up. Yeah, otherwise we're introducing another blot, so why not? When we're return hit, we either hit back or make an anchor a lot of the time. All right, 4-6. Four, 4-6 six, four, six is going to attack on the five point again, and they're in a nice early game blot hitting contest. We'll see how, who comes out with some piece of structure to gain an advantage. Well, I'm going to answer the question for Ryan. He's asking if uh, any particular books... Helped you improve in your in your last couple years? Books? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can check out uh, ZZ's book, I guess. You like ZZ? You told me you read a bunch, memorized most of the positions from Cube Like a Boss. Yeah, that's true. That was your standard answer for a while. I remember that. <laughs> you can uh, check out, mainly just watch and play, guys. Yeah. What I do is I just play XG over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again and, and realize what the blunders are, and eventually they go down. Against an anchor, I don't see too much going on. I don't on see here. a cube here. If, he finds, the, if he finds a cube, he's dreaming. Ace. This is a cowboy cube, as Falafel would call it. <laughs> Eight away, seven away, though. Will only has seven in the zone. Pretty weak position. Look, like the, look at this. It is borderline. And he's been finding these. Very strong. No, it's not. Look at no. that. I think uh, six to two to ace looks like. Yeah, that, not that's a play I would hit. make, but I'm I'm trying to find something better, and I don't really we see. We can it. hit an anchor as well. Is a nice play, thirteen to nine. Yeah, but I think this just wins. Four All right. one fans. Okay, and now, now, now this you is cannot, uh, now you can't take it anymore. Yeah, this is passable. So he sees his market loss potential on some simple sequences like this. Maybe a pretty above average. Uh, one, by the way, it's it's not too good either. Uh, someone asking if XG is worth it over GNU, for sure. It's way easier to work with a little... The strength might not matter that much, but, um, you know, I don't know. Why not learn from the, the bot that's a little bit stronger, I think. All right, seven point Features match. Are really My easy. bread and butter. Let's see how these guys play. And I think it's only $60 or something like that. It, it's really not that much for, like, the strongest tool in backgammon. Uh, Ed Ani asking if you keep track of the blunders in the file. Is that Ryan or who? Me? Yeah. I just I just play money games until I make a blunder and then start over again. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
But do you keep track of your mistakes to learn from them, or do you just yeah, need to see I, them once I, I, have a, I have a tack on them. You have a what? Uh, I have a, the, I don't know. I write them down in a little booklet. Oh, cool. 3 1, I think, just makes the five point, but we could cover the nine and not have no, to leave any it, shots. It can, but it's also not right. <laughs> now all his numbers play well, though, so it's interesting to think about there. Oh, I'm tired, actually. 5 3 is going to hit and keep going. That's it. Hit and continue, and Will's going to take the racing and checkers back advantage, while uh, Victor has the positional boardage advantage. Transcription catching up real quickly here. Okay. Does XG work on Mac? Yeah, if you use some sort of software with it, but not natively. People have found solutions for that, though. Agree with Ian that everyone learns different. I doubt that Ryan's learning technique works for many people, but it works for him for sure. Four six gonna slot the bar. Yeah, I think. Um, what's the difference between three and four checkers? Uh, Victor wants to go for mobility. This does control the outfield when missed, so it's pretty nice looking. They're gonna play pretty close. Uh, two one gonna hit and step up. Yeah, hit and step up. See the little bit more light escape on fours and sixes. Plays down for building instead. Okay, seems reasonable. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Will's right again. There is no, super he's close. Not. Oh, yeah, super close. Could have cleaned up to the eight. Playing down there, all basically break even side. I don't like this play. I would have played. He can split the as well. Play. The distribution six to five. Actually, like I don't see that that often because it seems so rare that it actually makes a big difference positively. Convinces you to not do simple splitting plays and things like that. All right, your what has he got more. with this one now? How about double fives? Wow. Oh, and yeah. And of course, you stay everything. there and you mother make the three or bring two down. I would just bring two down. Against a single checker back when we're blitzing a little more, less well, clear to me. They're really close. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to strip your outfield midpoint yeah, when your, your plan is to hit running sixes and things like that. And it makes a board point to threaten to attack that back checker. So switching eight to three has okay, different eight, kind three, of merit five. than usual. Three five probably just running. Yeah, sure. Four two is gonna hit. Nice shot. Does the two yeah, what does it, comes, it do? It Come comes down? down? There's nothing else. Yeah, I don't see anything else either. Stepping up sees a little more light. I guess that seems reasonable. Oh, it's it's way off though. Okay. Three four no, entering is strong. Uh, no, you're. Oh, this is hard. Uh, same number of shots challenges him to uh, break his midpoint to hit. This looks okay. And at least you're never getting pointed on head in the board. Okay. And he sees that five doesn't want to run out of timing. Hit, of five one's gonna be forced hit from the midpoint, so it's a hit, but it's not the most comfortable one. A lot of blots around for Victor right now. Wow. Important roll for Will hits shot. from the bar. And he has and to, he has to clear advantage. There, They're playing a seven-point match, too, by the way. We yeah. know these ones. <laughs> How's that for performance? 4-4 four, four is going to hit. Okay, yeah, that works. And probably make the nine and step into the three. I don't see anything better than that. What about 18 to 14 to have midfield, nah, uh, it outfield leaves, presence? It leaves those guys too, back, too far back. I don't think he's worried about being primed, and he's got to get... Otherwise, he's just... Like nearly ahead in the race and resigning himself. I think he is ahead in the race with four checkers back is like a real problem. Yeah, 18 14 is nearly tied here. That positionally just looks so much more robust to me. Seems like the style of play that Victor would make too. A bit surprised by this one. This is tough. I guess you can trade that midpoint for the bar point a lot of times. Comes but down is easy here. It's hard for me to see how Victor develops this. I guess he attacks. This is his game plan mainly now. Okay. Five. He's a little wow. bunched up on numbers. Fives that's, is that's gonna. That's a great roll. It makes it makes the the four. It hits loose and it comes out. Does it hit loose? It can make the midpoint. It can run one around the bend. Yeah. You come running around the bend so, is actually hitting is actually a blunder. Wow. Yeah. You I see, don't see enough gain for this. What? 
Fair enough. Yeah. You're behind. You're ahead in the race now. It makes sense to run around. Right. You've got a new game plan. One four gives it all back with a double. Yeah, hit. you got punished. Probably step up here, I would guess. Although six five is also fine. Yeah, your opponent's a lot happier to hit you. Yes, yeah, six five is better. You're kind of inviting contact there when you're outboarded. Okay. Double fours. double fours. This looks like a very nice roll. It's gonna certainly mobilize that One, single two. checker. I think he has to hit now just to take away a tempo. It was wrong before, but this is a different scenario. But he can also just like sit on the midpoint. That looks very reasonable to me too. But then he can get primed. Okay, yeah. He likes to sit in the middle of that five prime. Double twos. Near perfect roll for Will. Yeah, it's Putting a lot try. of pressure on Victor's position. Ahead in the race again. What a competitive match they've been playing. Uh, does now this what? require a crazy loose hit now? <laughs> this is tricky, actually. Uh, if he lets Will escape to the outfield, he's in a lot of trouble. He can just make the board. Okay, that looks pretty strong, too. But yeah, my inclination is three to two just because we're so afraid of Will escaping to uh if he gets that back checker going with a five or a six, that might be game over. Look at look how close these players are, and it's it's really hard to choose between the two. Hitting hitting just uh it wins way more games. He might be getting doubled either way though. Is this a cube? Uh, I could be a cube on volatility. Yeah, I like it. But um, I, I like it. It doesn't seem passable, that's for sure. Victor can certainly win this and gets a fan a lot of the time. He can win this, but it, it also can go amazingly right. Like, incredibly, incredibly I right. Would, I would love to see the, the plus plus on the cube decision. I would I would send this if, if I'm being honest. If the Just because any on two looks like a huge choice. market loser, and you, and he's still for a long way from covering, he doesn't even have the direct shots on the on the two point there. Yeah, Victor has work to do when he fans too, right? Send him a gift. Hmm. And look at that. Okay. Nice borderline volatility cube. Those are tough to find. 16.8. Numbers don't add up to typical cube territory, but I feel like this sort of calculation cube Will does pretty well at, even though he's been missing some. Maybe this is just the kind of position that he knows a little better. I, th I think he's got this. If I, if he's missed honest. some last roll cubes, though. That's been like um, some bigger cubes like this, actually, more clear ones. He's kind of skated right past. And that's been a big chunk of his equity loss in his PR so far. Uh -huh. So this one being even closer, he might have a harder time sending. Fears the turnaround and dealing with it. And yeah, it looks yeah, like he's right. going to well, take a roll. Uh, it's not going to happen. By four fans. And now on he's a happy fan, would Victor have a recube? I don't think so. No, no, Still no, plenty of no work chance. to do. Doesn't I think Victor, Victor knows he just missed one, I think. 5-3 covers the deuce. Because Victor's a bit of an early cube. a lot more pressure. Himself. He's still not a favorite yeah, after see, that roll. See, that, that's well, that's why it was such a big cube. Very interesting. And now after a fan, is he the favorite? He may be a favorite, but it's definitely not a but cube. What's his, his market loss would just be gaining freedom, if anything. But yeah, okay. Tiny, tiny favorite. Very interesting. Wow, nice roll. 6-5, one point, or two checkers out from the back. Uh, Which are we one. doing? Just one, like this, and then, and then down. All very close. Of course, we can't focus. The big risk is getting stuck back there, so unfortunately, we can't focus on closing the board. And if he gets hit on the ace, he's still doing great with Will behind a five prime. More important to focus on mo now mobility cubes, of the five point. And it's a very difficult take. This is this is not an easy take at all. Uh, that five six in the fan was a huge swing. He's ahead nine pips. He has these mild. I would pass this. I I I don't want to take this one. There's a little bit too many gamuts in here for me to for me to want to to snatch on to it. Seems He's like a nice cube. Oh, it's a huge take. 68, yeah. Wow. That's just the that only just, reason I feel like I have to show the power of the uh of the the 6 prime. 
The only reason I feel like I have any bearing on that cube is just because we saw the results the roll before, but I was thinking Victor was doing a lot better in this position as well. I mean, I, I wanted to, send, to pass that. I would that, have had trouble it, with Will's side, too. If, yeah. I, if I wanted to pass that, he should have sent it because Will, Will might have passed it as well. I think, though, I have seen Will very willing to take cubes like that, so I think he knows where he's at and that no risk of accidentally passing a cube like that. These old guys, Ryan, they know this stuff. Yeah, they know they, they can win from back here. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. This is a hard play, too, actually. Because 12-7 makes sense, but it pays off to the 1-6 Joker. Yeah, what is... So that's the 4 for I mean, sure. I, I'm, but I'm lost in this game. I wanted to pass this the pass the 4. This is very difficult to know, like, balancing the mobilizing checkers versus covering that ace point. Again, the priority just... Now, like, now is it still a take? I don't think so. Yeah, okay, I now think it's a big pass. pass. That's the difference. Knows he's, yeah, okay. Lost his market. That's the difference. Tricky, tricky game. Yeah, that was hard. That was not easy. And they executed that one really, really well. Well, they, he, they, they both missed a cube each. Yeah, small ones, though. Well, point zero. Found the right it's plays not, not the whole way through all that stuff. 6 5, Victor gets to run, leading 6 away, 7 away. Okay. What has he got? He's got a 6-5. Now what do you do? Four, either four down or three down and one out. All right, we're at the score. Six away, also seven make the away. That XG point. doesn't like ever. Uh, double sixes, he's played two of them. I would, I would just bring the four down. I don't want to step out here and pay off to his stack on the 13 point. Oh, has he played none of them? He played two. He made the bar. Okay, has, with the race lead, left. he could make a bit at escaping, though. Why not? You gonna, you gonna play down and out? I, I don't, don't like think this I'm play making the all. ace. Oh, oh, look at this. This is a strong contender. Yeah, third place, four down. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Those are all super close, though. Come down. That's interesting. Why it is? I guess the single checker back. I guess maybe turning this into attacking formation has a little more merit than usual. That's very strange, though. Those are not usually what I'm looking for. I'm usually is, preferring the bar. So this much is an interesting these. cube, actually. Six away, seven away, leading the race with the ace point made. I don't really see the threat. Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. Uh, I would if not. He makes send a this point. Personally. This is going to be too hard to take. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know though. With the checker back, maybe not. Ugh. Personally, I wouldn't send it. It's a little bit too early. Feels but, early uh, to me too. I, I could easily see this being a cube just based on the threats of running out. I'm not sure. I think it's pretty close. 63 shy, so pretty clear no cube. Um, Yeah, it looks that way to me, too. Happens to be leading as well in the match. And he's getting low on time and spending quite a time trying to sort this out and see how the rolls work out. Um, not feeling the pressure was still close to five minutes on the clock. but And he's going to send it, and Will's going to snap take it. Yeah, it was Vic to know he's not getting Victor's an early there. cuber. Yeah, likes to get him in, usually. Now what he's five to one. Do. Now, has now you're to, not even supposed to hit. You're supposed to come down and step. Has up. to play quiet, but um, yeah, both single checker back with a huge racing lead. I can kind of see the idea here, I guess. But he, I think he, he's stuck stepping me up to the twenty three and playing he, thirteen he, to eight. He might be fooled in, into uh, into cubing here, into hitting here because he sent a cube. He thinks he's supposed to go on the go on the attack. Yeah. Wow, and it's not too bad to just hit eight to three and continue to reduce. Well, wow! Did you see that the the play is actually to carry on to the two point to reduce shots? That is bizarre. I would for sure find this play the best play, but I'm surprised he even paused to think about it. Three six escapes the safety, so a small advantage for Will. Not no, he's, he's still he's still, he's still going to no be an, an underdog because he can just erase or a, not erase, yeah. No, I just mean he has something working for him in yeah, having yeah, sure, checker sure. escapes. And a, and, and a three here will be a big favorite. Nope, uh, but double five helps. Eight. That's close, though. And we're gonna uh, play Victor's it. definitely sad to have sent the cube. And we're going to play a PR game, which is okay. Bad distribution for Victor with that ace point made for a race as well. But uh, this does a little nicer. Fills in the five, goes to the four instead. Why? Okay. Just knows that. If Will can roll a double six, here, I guess it avoids know. playing deeper later. Probably is the idea. Eight to four. That's a weird four to me.
And they're going to have to keep a close eye on the race every roll. Very possible that Will can take this over, especially after a roll like 3-1. I think uh, I'd be inclined to play the 6-5 to five with it for distribution again. Sure. Double fives. Wow. Double fives turns the game around and makes Will a favorite. I don't think it's enough to send the cube back. No, not yet. In 7 away, 6 away, there is a small difference in the take point. I think it's around, might be more like 24, but in the 25 range. It's higher than normal money, so he's got to send back a little bit earlier. 6-3, okay. I mean, he's, he's only had like two pips. Six three and in, and only two pip so lead. Th this, this can't be a cube. He's just going to count quick. Yeah, his distribution's way worse, too. So it's looking pretty ugly. The Lots of compensation. The distrib's important in here. Yeah, very much so. Distrib. I'm actually surprised that he managed to find a way to put an extra checker on the three instead of playing like uh, yeah, 11 to too. 6. I thought that was like Not a, sure what that's like about. a half a genius play. Yeah, was it right too? What is this? Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, all right, cool. There you go. How many guys you got showing up to the seminar? I think we had about 15 people for it this morning. Nice, man. It was nice. really fun, yeah. Worked out. I think I've got some ideas of other things I can add to it. I might end up doing it again in the States later in the fall. Um, but got to talk a lot about the concepts from my book, so nice to do that. I would just come off the six point twice. I don't see a point in stacking it up. I mean, all these plays are going to be just small, so whatever. Mm-hmm. Victor's distribution remaining much better. 7-3, I guess. Or 10-5. 9 flies is probably better. I think 7-3 looks nice, but ten, yeah, you're right. You're right. Both are fun. So how, how far favorite. is he ahead right now? He's he's actually behind by... It showed him 51%. The wastage is pretty key Yeah, the here. wastage is there. Not enough to catch up for Will. Still can't fill in that 5 point. That could be a long-term liability. Double 3s is great. Double 3s fixes a lot of problems. 1, 2, 3. Can't take a six. checker off, but can play 6 to 3. Looks pretty nice. And he's, he's still one huge double away from winning this game as Will. No, that's not going to help. 6 to 5 distribution ace for sure there to fix long-term 5s problems. I would have played 3-2 just on the stack, but it's, it's borderline. Uh, having the 5s is more important than having good 2s. Yeah, you by know? Point zero zero one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Those are so close. Uh, for this is a tricky little dilemma here. I guess we can take a checker off the three now. Yeah, both very close. Come on, Will caught. It's Will caught up at all here. Checker off, and then five we, three. I guess four to two would have been my instinct. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I, I'm lost in these. I don't know. What's <laughs> I just play what, what feels natural. Yeah. Two off, nice shot. Victor just barely hanging on to his racing lead. Okay. Two, oh. two one, check her off, sure. Two still, off again. Still a double six away from winning. Just, there it is. That's likely to be enough. Oh, yeah. Six now three, I don't think it's gonna keep him in the game. So he has two, four, six, five is thirty-two. Thirty-two for the white guys. Four, eight, twelve, twenty-one, and five twenty-six. Twenty-six, thirty-two is just an easy pass. Especially on an NF four Q. Yeah, in a short race with the trailing match score and a recube, everything's gonna point to a pass on this one, but Will's gonna make sure. Because he does have one, I guess the one thing is he has seven checkers to Victor's six. But it's clearly not going to play like that. There's a lot of wastage left in Victor's position. Um, super unlikely he'll be able to take those six checkers off in three rolls. So it should look a lot like eight checkers to him. Oh, it's very close though. Okay, that's a surprise. To me. Yeah, it should be an easy cube, I guess. But um, does find it eventually. Victor's, not, Victor's, Victor's got not some calculation to do. It's. I mean, it's a four cube, and I'm in a match to seven. Usually, these things, especially when you're uh, when you're leading, it's gonna have a, a higher take point. I think they'll be surprised if this one. It's his style to pass it to. I think. 
He likes to play more games and make his opponents earn it, and so he does let that go correctly. All right. 12-11. Another interesting score. I mean, this is why the 7-point match is so much more interesting than the 17. 17, you're basically playing money games until someone gets a big lead. 7 <laughs> points, you have all the little intricacies of the, of the score going on. Oh, you're missing the mic completely, I think, Ryan. What? You're not, you're talking off instead of the mic. Can you hear it behind you? I, I get, I can tell right away if you're not actually getting picked up. I'm saying this, the seven, this is why a seven point match is much more interesting than a 17. Oh, seven, Victor's taking a short break here too. 17, okay. you're playing money games when someone gets a big lead or the race or the score gets small enough that, that you can actually get into the smaller oh, thank races. You. Thank you. Meanwhile, in the yeah. seven point matches, you have all the little in intricacies exactly of the individual scores. Commentary <laughs> in Monte Carlo, right? <laughs> Been pretty sweet. What? Oh, you just play seven pointers all day, you're saying? All day long. Yeah, they got the most interesting scores, but the one thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I play. We probably play 10. All for what? 50, 50 stakes on Galaxy or something like that? We played some for fun. 150, mostly 50, I guess. <laughs> You're one of the only few people who will just play me. Most people are just sitting there looking for fish. Of course I play. I play anytime. Yeah, yeah, you play anybody. Play you it's, anytime. Like, it's like me. I'll play anybody. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of bump money. There's only a uh, few players who will play anybody. So on a short break here, oh, I did want to go um, mention the hints on the cube. We could get the... <laughs> I'll be right back. Send me some questions so I can answer them quick again. That's always fun. I like chatting with you guys on the breaks. What do we have going on here? I still going to turn down a bullet pasta most likely. Scores have a noticeable impact on recubes even in long matches. True. We can hear him. 
Oh, you can hear them all enough. Cool. Someone laughed. What's happening? Is this the final of the intermediates? <laughs> yeah. Wilcox, Snellings, and Victor Ashkenazi, bum hunting. Doing a great job of it. Top five players who entered? I don't know. Uh, these two, Mochi. I don't know who else, man. Kazuki's real strong. I like that one. Michi's in around two. And a whole bunch of other people. Sander. You know, I don't know. There's infinite. I don't know how you compare a lot of those guys at the very top. Undefeated means we aren't in the fighter's bracket or one loss or anything like that. Ooh, ooh, quick. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know which one was, but here, here. Okay. All right. When will be any updates, upgrades of XG? Uh, ask Xavier. Mr. M, read the top of the frame what we are watching. Yep, 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 yep. Not even a final. This is true. Iron Man, you are. Is that me? I don't know. Sure. Are there lots of shootouts and money games on the side? I am happy to report that in Monte Carlo, there always are. Usually it's like the center of the room early in the day, and they're playing big stakes too. Um, the biggest shirts I'm aware of in general that are like public in any way. So there's always a lot of very interesting action. I don't think you can necessarily just go sit down and play with them. I think they're looking to play with specific people. Um, but yeah, the, the money action is live and well here, which is really cool. Um, I don't know. I think I've seen like 500 euro point going on and things like that too. There's probably more available, but, but yeah, Monte Carlo is like the one place where that kind of action, all the highest stakes stuff uh, is just happening. Very good stuff. John O'Hagan and Ed O'Loughlin. Yeah, strong players. I don't know if they're, I mean, maybe the ones that I mentioned are a little better. Maybe not. Cause, I don't know. I don't know. They're all very strong. Busato must be up there. Yeah, top intermediate. Won the intermediate. Zdeniak playing really strong too. I agree. Talon Rich uh, pool to be sure. Okay, we're playing again. All right, both players starting with the pointing roll. Great start for both of them. Split for Victor now. Um, six away, five away. A little bit awkward score. Not huge adjustments. We'll matter more on recubes, if anything. Aces is a great response from the bar. Makes the best board. And so Victor with the three checkers back in a structural advantage. Wilcox close to escaping a checker against three back. It's a little bit for both of them. And so Wilcox is going to play into that game plan of escaping. Step up and have a few more numbers to escape. Clean up a blot. We'll see what Victor can do about that. The two down for containment looks pretty strong, but he could also make the 22. I think he's in fine shape to just leave himself triple splitting back, though. I'm inclined to make a little bit bigger play and. uh... 23 to 22, 13 to 11, but they all run very close. Okay, okay. 4 1 is just gonna, yeah, bring a spare down to the 8. Looks very nice. Needs a bigger 4 to run with it. 6 4 looks like he can hit loose and try to contain that checker and give Wilcox trouble escaping. Fourth checker isn't really gonna change a whole lot back if he gets hit. Mostly on the upside. Uh, entering ace and the distribution 5 looks pretty strong. And not a lot of covering numbers, but he can advance the anchor in the bar point and have a nicer prime here. 8 to 7, 22 to 21 looks very strong. I guess that alternative of 23 to 21 to try to get the back checker moving, seeing the light, makes a little bit of sense. But just tactically freezing all those checkers from, from making the four point has a lot of value too. So making the anchor very strong. Yeah. 
Thought as will respond. Can't hit the back checker. Steps up and sees the light and takes a tempo hit. Okay. And pretty instantly sees that play again. Really surprised by how fast he picks up on these. A little bit unintuitive plays looking to me. Maybe 13 to 8 would stick out to me eventually, but finds a very strong roll there. A 6, probably going to have to pop out to the bar. He's going to waste all his timing by coming down. Okay, it does create a cover for the 3-point. See some value there. 6 is going to hop out to safety and just leave that blot on the deuce, and when it's missed, he'll be in really good shape. And it is missed. Now does Victor have to take pressure off that blot? It seems like it's still helping his position out. Um, can make the ace point, okay. Two down from the mid has a lot of merit, but staying back on the 24 is important. 6-5 uh, covers, great shot for Wilcox. And with a 22-pip racing lead and the third checker back, good structure. He's going to be approaching a cube here. 4-3. Okay, still not... Okay, Victor's ready to get some mobility. Um, they all run really close now. With the made two-point, there's a little bit of blitzing pressure. But I still don't see the pointing numbers, so I'd be inclined to stay back on the 21. I'm surprised it's so close. I'd probably, both the last rolls, I'd probably just give up the midpoint and hope to build my board that way. Now a 5-3, this can make a point or it can bring a distribution. Yeah, the distribution after this play is a little concerning, which is why he's looking at playing just down to the 5 instead, even though this seems like pretty intuitive play to make, to just make another board point and pressure that lone checker back on the 24. Pretty heads-up play to notice that that's scary. I think I'd have trouble passing up such a strong asset, but it really is a viable option to just play down for distribution and focus on the race and flexibility instead. Both of them playing really sharp. Enjoying this match a lot and seeing all the decisions they're finding and getting right. Five two just has to release the midpoint, and Wilcox is taking a take a moment to consider the cube. The market loss is not super clear, other than the set. But if he can bring a checker into the seven or the six or the five, that might be just enough pressure on that blot on the twenty four um, to generate a pass. So he is right on the borderline here, and I don't think the score is impacting this too much. But it can't be, I mean, a thing to think about here, too, is that I, I guess he's probably considering that it can't be too bad of a cube. He's clearly winning this. Not too surprised to see him take a roll off and play to the five. And now we might see that market loss sequence, depending on how Victor performs. I think he needs a three to step up. Instead covers and comes to the bar. And... This is going to be a more clear cube, but we can see by the analysis there that he still has a fairly clear take. Maybe making a board point was enough. I'm not really sure exactly what's going on there, but perhaps the market loss is a little more clear. But I guess we don't have any new pointing numbers to make the ace or anything like what's that. What's he ahead by? But the distribution improvement is just uh, very nice here. 19. And so small improvement, yeah. But it has a, has a clear cube now. Yeah. Taking a roll off instead, though. That's and 2-1, okay. 
Not the prettiest of rolls for him. Stacking up the five is not ideal. Would I like to roll a seven to play to the six, something like this? Six, three. I think Victor's ready to step up, as I mentioned. And, oh, he's going to make the bar point for better contact. This is a nice play. That. Actually. Yeah. Of course, that six away contact is much better than being stuck. And he has to cube now in volatility, by the way. It's going to be a, a, a sizable error not to cube this. Yeah, with the extra checker back, a lot of times, well, Victor has a better board, so I think he can take. But yeah, it's scary it's because take. he can also lose a gammon here. Uh, when when Wilcox rolls perfectos or has to hit lose something like this. Um, yeah, so winning chances have gone down, but his, his cube is still the same size for the volatility as we've discussed. But I have, again, seen Wilcox pretty hesitant to send these volatility cubes intending to take rolls here. So won't be surprised if he chooses to continue playing on for one more roll until he gets into something more clear, potentially losing his market. And that won't be a very large error if he makes that decision. I think he's got this. Oh, Victor all the way down to two minutes on the clock, too. He could be in some pressure to and finish Will's up this match. And Will's at 14 minutes? Yeah, Will's got plenty of time. He spends a lot of time when he needs to on these cube decisions, but usually he's making a lot of plays really fast as well. There you go. And nice he cube. sends a cube. Okay, he does find this one. Nice cube for Will. Taking a sit before he takes it. I like it. That's the Victor side. <laughs> <laughs> Going to take his time, let his uh, delay run down, get all the thingy he can in. What is this? 5-3. Five, three. Five, three. Nice Keep play. Keep the distribution by playing a checker behind. Looks good. Can't stack up the 5 further. Even though it does take a checker out of play somewhat. Double 3s is a great improvement for Victor. Uh, can he afford to stay on the bar? I think so. Um, if he was winning the race, he'd think about something like 18-15 to 15 with all 3. But being down, he's got to stay back for contact. And hope to roll something that passes the midpoint next turn. Will not too happy to have sent the cube after this sequence. Eight to three, three two is just going to play safe inside somehow. Six, six one to one is better. better. Just conserve sixes. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, focus on on race and not contact. So, but this does put more pressure on Victor to get his back checker moving without leaving a shot in front of the midpoint. Five three is going to be fine though. Two forty six. Nice play. And very close game. Anyone could win this one. Wow. Clears the eight point first. And with Victor trailing, he might be recubing some direct six shots if he gets into an even money game. If, now if he can board. close his board, yes. Yeah, which he does now. And so if Will's forced off with a six. No. And he's not. Gets to make the ace instead. We'll see if Victor can preserve his board. Not going to have a, a cube if he has to crack here, for sure. But a set will do it, too. 2-1, nice okay, gets to survive one more roll. One of Victor's best rolls there for sure. Looking for his oh, picks up. Oh, also a nice roll. Uh, Will survives, though. Gets to fix his blot. <laughs> and stubbornly trying to, okay. There's a shot, okay. Victor's going to be the first to roll it. Six Has five, some six, returns when he six. gets hit, so can't, um, as long as it's not a 6-1. 5-1 is going to leave a return. And with the shot, it's still not going to be good no, enough no, for Victor to send the cube. cube but he can win a lot of gammons when he hits. He's going to be stuck playing on, basically, when that happens. Hard to pick up all those checkers. So not as bad as it looks when he rolls a six. Nope. Double threes, wrong six. And we'll achieve the closeout. Very few gammons here, but likely to just coast a three-away scoreline. Six away, three away. Clear lead in the match. It's been a long and competitive one. Really fun one to watch here. Hmm. Dice towers we're talking about. Okay. I like Dice Towers. Joke's going on in the chat. Okay. Victor escapes. Saves the gammon. Very few wins here. Gonna roll it out anyway, though. 
He's got close to a percent, so he's got to try for this one. Now it's less than one game in 100. Ooh, a gap on the ace feels like it adds a little big. Okay. Oh, now he has a little bit more Better than, than one in 100. Percent. Now he has a little less than one in 100. Four two, two off. Big shot for Will. No set. So All right, so it looks like it's victory. victory. 13 12 for Victor. Nice game. Double four is a little sided. Oh, 13 14 11. Sorry. Yes. Strong error rates for both players. They're playing like, like, uh, playing well. Yeah, what was the over under on that? I think we're slightly over 2.5. Probably five and a half two. total, I would say. Oh, the sweatshirt's coming off. Will's getting serious for the end of the <laughs> match here. Victor unimpressed. Not intimidated at all. Just tired. Typical I haven't seen him smile. Have you seen him smile? I don't think he's smiled. Victor? Yeah, I don't think no, Victor didn't. smiles during a match. I was prepared to bet on that. It's his, st his stone face. <laughs> I bet I could make him smile during a match. Split at the score. Might be a placating smile, though. One of those kind of sardonic, like, you know. Smug, yeah, nice try. That's Victor's style. The split with this is interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's borderline for money. It's right at the down is right when you're trailing, and the split is right when you're leading. Especially mm -hmm. here, three away. Does seem to be the difference. I'm used to just that rule of thumb that for money, if you hit from the eight point, you want to reinforce it with a checker from the mid. Yeah, it makes so sense. I think for money, that's usually my play. I think I think for money you're actually supposed to you're Ace supposed to split with four one and, and come down with the two one. But I'm not gonna make you another ten to one odds. <laughs> four six hits in the outfield. I certainly wasn't baiting anything there. <laughs> Three six is gonna hit on the bar point again. Okay, early exchange of hits. And at the trailing score, it's not one where Victor's gonna get too wild with the cube, but sending a lot of checkers back is gonna make it easier to get a cube in for sure. Three one. Three one. Makes the twenty one. Usually point, I'd like to make the five point, but we leave infinite shots and can just make the anchor instead. And especially leading in the match, we like to anchor up and take away the That's threat of Victor's hit cube. There, Victor's yes. happy to hit, of course. And he's close board. to a cube if the rolls bad. That's bad enough. He can send it. It still looks like a long enough game with the anchor that Will can take easily. Uh, Maybe yeah. the hit with the three or an eight. Is the market loser? I'm it's not a, sure. It's actually an easy cube. Like, there are some extra gammons with the like, fourth checker back. Pretty obvious, no development. if I have to say. I feel like the cube must be on the smaller side and the take is easier, but I'm not sure. But it's still pretty obvious. Yeah, double 002. So plus plus could change that. So borderline cube. Victor, Especially for Victor, because Victor is an early cube where he's going to send it. There's no chance. Seems pretty it. likely. It's a nice thing to do after you burn off a lot of clock time like this, too. Howdy, right? And snap take from Will. He's had a lot of those this Slot match. the bar. Slot the bar with it. Why do we need to add another lot to the mix? I because guess it probably not? helps us build, too. But um, but 10 to 9 actually helps us make the three-point a little better attacks there. So I think the priority is not letting a second anchor occur or something like this, keeping him busy. So I like this this distribution play a little better. Oh, double, double fours. fours. That's just going to make the four point, of course. Four on head, yeah, neutralizes the position. Victor still with some advantage, but not the same threats he had before. Sad to have let go of the cube after this iter iteration. Oh, you're fine. This is actually a nice roll. 5-3 makes the bar point anchor, yeah. No, no, no they, can, they can make the 20. The game. But I think you're right, the bar is probably slightly better. Oh, it can make the 20 point. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Nope. Yeah, They're both really close, okay. Better. 
I don't know. I don't know how to choose between that. Yeah, I, I, I would think I would think you're ahead in the race. So you want to do something like this, but you see that that the blots you available and then twenty point helps if it get if you get hit. That's why. Yeah, you leave some attacking potential. Okay. You give your opponent either way a lot of trouble getting home with no eight points. So awkward position for Will. Five one probably just gonna come in and do that. Sure. Plays quietly behind with the racing lead. Seems reasonable. 5-1, one, 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 nowhere out. to play this. I guess it's going to come off the 21. Comes out all the way. There's nothing else. And this is a boring game right now. <laughs> okay, three hit. Two, probably just lift. Continues on to the eight. Looks nice, yeah. Two, one, and hit Will's back. able to hit back and send a second or a fourth checker back. But still behind Victor's better structure and slight underdog. That's interesting. Not sure I would have guessed that. Almost dead even race. Double one's great improvement for uh Will here. Think quickly taking the advantage in this game. Not for five long. out to avoid being attacked and six to five, yep. Yeah. Got to play fairly quiet. Look at this. He should just uh, can do something better with distribution, but not a lot of clock time and making uh, a reasonable and solid play quickly instead of spending too much time on it. Victor uh, seems to be proud of him, uh, of his clock abilities. Yeah. He can quickly play, play, he can play with one minute sense. on the clock, no problem. Yeah. I believe in his speed gammon for sure. He plays very well and he gets to think as well. That's for sure. 5-2. Five 5-2. Two, five two, getting checkers off yeah. that midpoint. Way too stacked up. Boring game. Yeah, what's going to go? They're going to make some simple plays here. I eight think point. like two off the eight point. And Wilcox still just either trying to make a point or play off the midpoint. Uh, there you go. Oh, five five is going to change the race. Okay. Come straight around. Eight pip lead. He doesn't, yeah, this is going to kind of help clear the midpoint. Would love to have an eight or something, but um, also going to struggle to find a re Ooh, he this blocked game. his double fours. How about that? Yeah, Victor, I guess, would be happy to escape, but he also, his contact's doing really well for him. No, so no, I don't he, think he's if, too, if, too if, sad if, to be stuck. Uh, if he could have run there, he would have. Yeah, I agree. With an eight pip lead, you're supposed to. But I, I do think the contact still favors him. I would, play, nice I, I would not do this. I'd play 13 to 4. I think it's probably slightly better. Yeah, why not just 13 to 4? He wants to make the ace point because having another board point for contact is valuable. Hmm. I guess there's some merit to it, but. No, yeah. but the race lead matters too much. 6 but, 1 is going to cover, and then sure, any ace. 8 to 7, a little bit better there. Interacts a little stronger. And Will's basically going to need a set to bring this game home. Not going to have any opportunities to clear, to reduce shots clearing the midpoint by like landing on the 11 very often. Maybe a 5 deuce would do that or something. 6 1, slot the bar, why not? Okay, double threes is going to help clear quite yeah, a bit. It does. Still lots of contact. And, uh... I would not do this. I would play 11 to 8. Look at this. Yeah, 11 to 8 is the stronger. Having the 8 point, we at least clear one of the you, points. You're, this you're, one, you're not that might clear us both. Yeah. And you're still going to be hard to clear those points there. Misses a tactical opportunity there. Played it pretty fast, too. Sometimes when your opponent has to play fast, yeah, it gets in your head and forces mistake. you to rush. That's my that's my game plan. Yeah. Play Good luck with that. Guys, yeah. If I see it's not working, I'll just, <laughs> I do have the ability to stop immediately. Or three covers. Even for sets, too. Oh, what are they checking about? I think I saw Victor smile after we joked about that. I know, it's a miracle. Yeah. What's he doing that for? Come on, Will. Look at this. This is very close, too. I'm not sure what the idea is here. Trying to conserve sixes. Uh, he does have problems with, like, 6-2, six, 6-3. Six, six, plays better after this, though. 
Oh, they're getting tired. Go ahead, take, I'm take fine. Just, don't worry. You do no, like, it's you precious. Just, take like you six. didn't take six seconds from me. No, but before, there was another one early in the match. Wow. Okay. So Victor's a favorite again. That's good. Grass see more back Ammon better than boring Crawford games. <laughs> Two in, six looks a little better, yeah. Not a huge racing lead, though. Easy for Will to turn this around with a set of sixes, for example. Will Snelling is on fire. He's going to have to have a sizable lead to find a recube, whatever six-way, one-way is, something like 11%. So Victor's got to be all but dead to lose this game on the cube. And Wilcox is going to want to get right up to that where he has a difficult decision to, to even send the cube. Or two, two off. Victor's still surviving. Some chances. Double sixes right back in there. Okay. Got the lead again. Much needed to stay alive in this match and avoid going to Crawford. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, and with sixes of his own from Wilcox. Okay. Six Two five, off with the six shot. five, it's pretty huge. This must be a really close game. Uh, Wilcox, the clear favorite, being on roll, but their EPC, I think, wow, is pretty similar. Two one. Two one is bad, but the distribution's Two okay. One's Improvement. Uh, yeah, bad one though. I think it made Victor the the favorite. Takes a checker off. Does that help? Two yeah, roll, two small roll. favorite after that roll. But Will can just have no aces and that no misses. That double one is terrible. That's a miss. Now he's got a. Maximize sets. Yeah. And this gets threes. Is there any way to get better than threes? Probably I guess not. not. And Victor could miss with some consecutive aces here, but he does not. And so Will's going to need a set. Threes are higher. Almost. Three one doesn't do it. And Victor's going to make his way to four away, three away. And we're into these most exciting end of match scores yeah, that's now. That's right. This is why seven points. Really aggressive cubes. Seven from point match is a king of backgammon. <laughs> Especially between like really strong players. Yeah. What a well played match by both of them. Aiming to get under that 2.5 together margin there. And Will's still going to slot up the trailing score. I think splitting's I a little bit favored. Point. Or at the leading score, sorry. But uh, close enough where preference is happy to take over. Uh, Victor makes a nice point in the three points. Six three. Six three is gonna cover it and, and probably split. split? Yeah, yeah. yeah, split. Yeah. Seems like the game plan at this score. Not sure why he's close so quick to reach to the midpoint here. I think he'll find the split. I wonder if he is Saves got confused by the score for a second. I don't know. Two one. How do you play it? As Victor? Yeah. I uh, hit, man. Yeah, oh, he how? he chooses the down, though. And then where's the one? What? I'm pretty sure you're supposed to lift. That's a weird one. I don't know it. 5-2, I think Victor should still be... After a down play, maybe he plays down as well. No, it's wrong. No, well, they're both making a mistake on not splitting. It makes it more interesting, at least. Especially now. Okay. I guess he has more risk of being Six, four, makes, makes the sense. bar that point. Makes the bar point, yeah, nice improvement. Uh, still small. I think Wilcox is doing a little better in this game, but it's Double confusing. sixes, nice roll. Double sixes is going to ruin that. And, make... and yeah, I think keeping the five prime is stronger yeah, yeah. than keep covering. The, keep the five prime is better. And in dupl even duplicates the aces, look at that. And this is getting scary for Will. Really needs to uh, split next roll. I don't think that's enough for... Still a pretty clear favorite in this game. Not like the cubes coming from Victor or anything like this, but uh, one roll away from disaster. How's Victor going to perform? I guess he'd like to hit on the ace, but making a board point is probably better. Wow. Fives is his now, now it's like a too good almost. 
stack up. And when we're in like a too good almost, then I think that's at three away, four away, particularly yeah, something that Will can have an easy time claiming. Vic Victor is never going to or take this, which is nice. Claiming a point. Uh, how many gammons do I see here? Maybe about twenty five percent. Sends the cube. Yeah, it's completely and it borderline. is borderline too good. Yeah, and uh, Victor finds an easy pass. All right, two away, four away. Here we go. Tough to make a mistake not sending the cube at three away, four away. Um, so I probably would just play through that and not really be sure. But Will finds a nice borderline cube. Well done. Two-way, four-way, even more exciting score. Six-four is going to make a point for certain. Is he waiting on Will to hit the clock? He's going to think about it a while. Okay. <laughs> Double fours is killing all Victor's hopes right now. Yep. Great counter to the 6-4 open. He's done that before in this match, too. And what does he have? Double fours of his right. own? I uh, think this is exactly how that one yep, went. Oh, he had sixes last time. Another Sorry. boring holding game. Mutual holding game. Will's going to be really happy with that. Oh, with yeah. The match he, he loves it. He loves it. Not a lot of score adjustment right. happening at 13, this point seven, now. 6 four. We can bait the contact, yeah, let our opponent hit off the anchor if they want, get back in a gamma-ish position. Even more exciting to make a bold play like that at this kind of score. Will needs to be a little more careful about hitting, but early enough in the game with the block behind that he can there's go no, for it, of course, else. and change the race. All right, 4-6, probably just probably going... Just freedom, hop yeah, out yeah, to yeah, the no, outfield. No, there's nothing else. 4-2, okay, that's a bad roll. 4-2 looks like it makes the 11 point, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, but it's kind of a whiff, Not though. Not too bad. You would prefer to hit, of course. Or covered. Two one. Now he has to hit, actually. Probably just there and then hit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Quick find from him, too. That's a tricky play, but just no aces, so that's where it's going to be, I suppose. Uh... Four, Will okay. responds. Could this have been in some gammon pressure after having left his anchor. Yeah, you don't uh, want to. You don't want to break the structure in front of the twenty point. I think you do. Yeah. So, so here he, he finds the slot, but break the uh, breaking the overrated midpoint was slightly better. Okay, five and hit. Yeah, That's might right. as well switch when you're leaving the shot anyway. Okay, what's next? How about four one? And you're supposed hit, to lift. I think that makes sense. We can play for the race now. Try to play it simple and come around. Don't need board points necessarily. There's a 5-4. That's going to jump out into the outfield. Oh, good hit. We could hop out to the outfield. I think I like this. Uh, I don't like this play at all. 21 and 15. Could have actually hit on the 4-point as well. Okay. Yeah, a little too tight when he's trailing. He should find a little more contact somehow. Okay, 4-1, going to do that. Starts that. the point, gets building. Yeah, looks pretty strong. And really needs, under pressure, to mobilize those checkers on the 20 and behind a lot yeah, of structure. Yeah, why not break the 11 out. point? You have to break it eventually. Now's the time. Yeah, we're not trying to restrict those checkers. We're just trying to uh, break away to a winning race. So it's a good opportunity to do that. 6-5, probably just going to come out play around. there, yep. sure. I would have oh, found that idea. play, to be honest. At least oh, online. Six three. Maybe just not behind. in a championship game. Okay, four two. Four two gets to work Covers on the board and does that. I uh, could have started the fourth. Oh, he's supposed to come out to the bar. These contact seeking plays are kind of uh, passing Victor up, but he's doing okay and cover contact. and what else? I guess six three. No nine one. There you go. Interesting. Yeah, you don't care about your board strength anymore. Yeah, just maintaining distribution for the race that you're hoping to get into. So interesting when we yeah, prioritize yeah, so you could game come plans. Come out and you could even leave it there. Or you could I'd rather like come this. around. I feel like than uh, make the three. Feels a little. Yeah, impure, I don't like uh, the three either. I would have. I would have come out and slotted. Eight to two, three to one looks nice for distribution as well. Still just hoping for some roll that allows him to clear the midpoint safely. Okay, three, three one. Ones. Does this, sure. Slots, sure. 5 4, what a roll. Beautiful wow, clearing a, shot. And Victor's take point is going to be around 19% here, so a little bit worse than error. money. But so when he comes down there, he can still claim this game. 
Uh, it's not gonna be money, by the way. It's gonna be a lot, a lot lower than that. At at four away, two away, it's about eighteen and a half percent. Right, which is about a pip or two less than money. So being down fifty pips uh, in the race pips. with not too much clearing to do is should be. And a here is four, fourteen percent. It's not enough to take. Let's it go and we go to Crawford. Four away, one away, Gammons counts. Hoping to get to the DMP game quickly with the Gammon. <laughs> Two AM. One person insisting in chat that commentary is way better tonight than last night. Okay. What's that? <laughs> Feedback received. What did they say? Did uh, no. Commentary? Uh, last night they said they did. I don't know. Better now. Whatever. Uh, split People talking down. smack about our buddies. What, what are you doing it. talking smack about me? I'm the Not champ. Not you. <laughs> no, no one's talking smack about you anymore. They learned no, their Double lesson. hit. Let's go. Yeah, for the gammon. It's probably a reasonable play. You, you like to leave the point slotted after you hit a lot of times and just bring a checker down to cover it at normal scores. Oh, I guess we can play a little harder that. when Will's, gammons Will's, are quite Will's, nice. Will's a big favorite to win this game right now. There's a 5-3. Five, five, three gets to, to try to one more time for that five point. Hope for the best. Need some crazy Hope fan here six. with three checkers no, back. 3-2 no. is going to hit. That works. And we get to play a complicated game with Victor not much time on the clock. And Will rushing as though he's under time pressure, right, too. All right, now a bit of a back game, actually. No, nah, maybe not. Another holding game. Nice to anchor past the one piece of structure. Will would love to do the same. 5-3. And three. can't. Kind of a do-nothing roll. Yeah, it is. Um, maybe step up in 13-8, to 24-21 to kind yeah, of play. Yeah, I, I like that play, Nick. I think that's a great play. Okay, but... 13-5 to, to hit better. instead. Okay, I that's wouldn't an find this. Find. This looks... Uh, this looks too gammonish, and it looks like you just want to play for a race here, but I guess this is slightly better. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the upside of that is. Some of those are really in, unintuitive Well, the upside me. is making the five point. Sure. Doesn't seem like a, enough of an improvement, though? I, I agree. I don't know. Six one for who? Black? Or white? Okay, forced to make a simple play. We'd love some sort of better contact. Coming out from the back. from the back of one of them was interesting, actually. There, race is actually it might, it might have been right. I'm not back sure. Three back. It's three two. Now I guess you don't want to leave a shot. If you play like this, sure. Yeah, both trying to keep it relatively simple and preserve what race they have. Make some structure along the way. Three one. Three one. Now what? Thirteen nine. I guess. Sure. Yeah. Invite him off his anchor. Six two looks reasonable. Done stack as well. Steps up. Yep. I'm and not sure I see any other options. Plays eight, six, eight to six with it is interesting. Okay. But you, you like the four and four distribution better. Yeah. Looks nicer. We'd rather not make a stack of five. But I guess you get attacked here more is why Three, they're close. One, makes a nice Gets to make a point. point. And we're headed to another holding game. Not a lot of structure in this game. Kind of awkward for both players. Going to have trouble continuing to play safely. Okay, um, three, down one, in six, the race. Two. I'm not sure which anchor Victor is going to want to leave first, but he's going to start making board points and unstacking the six first. Five four has will somewhat handcuffed. Looks like six to two is somewhat required unless he wants to park on the nine. Eight and three then, is reasonable here. Interesting. Like, I really hate playing behind the anchors, but yeah, you create a stack of five and strip your midpoint when you play down. So, but it's it's still better to not play the builders at a three point. It's too impure, I guess. All these plays running close. These mutual holding games can be really tough to navigate properly. But they're finding a lot of good plays in them for sure. 3-1 Three, one Three, one is going to cover the deuce. Small board advantage for Victor now. In favor contact for real. Double fours is going to do something to help clear. That's a bad roll. Okay, no, no, it, it, uh, three it down just plays. And leaving the midpoint yeah, yeah, is nice. He, he, uh, but one more four, and he would have been in trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Five four. Nice I block. think Victor is even less ready to leave no, his anchor. No, no, so yeah, slot from the midpoint. I like it. He's gonna play. Now he needs both like his that. anchors. Five four is uh, uh, the has to run or else break the six. And I 
Wow, breaking the six is an option. I cannot see making that play. That's a terrible roll. Wow. That really is a bad roll. This is a very difficult play for a human to find to give up the six point with so much work left to still bring this around. But when you look over this, uh, he is outboarded, really hates being gammon. I wonder if the score impacts this or not, if it's just uh, gives up enough more gammons uh, at expensive wins or something like this. But uh, finds the human play. I think this is the natural thing to do for sure. 6-3. Six, 6-3 three. Six, three hits. It's going to hit, and it's probably just going to play 13-10 to get the checker to the, to the scene. Sure, the, the cover for point. the four. I like it. And Will enters nicely, probably just going to play to the six here. Could hit loose uh, to try to buy a tempo. I'm not sure that buys enough. But I, think, I didn't think, I think it bought enough last time either. Right now. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I really want to pick up those extra blots, huh? That's that's an interesting one to me. He's enough ahead in the race that I'm kind of inclined to play quiet. Fan, Three, okay. And that, now he gets paid off for hitting. Good yeah, job. Huge advantage now. 4-1. Um, nice roll, actually. Yep. I think we can just play three to deuce with it. Yes, he, he has to enter now. He's going to get run off the board. No. It two could be Janet rolls a five. 2-1. You got to go. You got to... Huh. Yeah, you just got to go all the way to 17 point, I guess. Yeah, why not just 20 to 17 and try to... That's the last bit of problem to solve. Wants to find something safer and not risk the gammons of leaving the anchor. I suppose they all run really close. Someone asking that we show PRs. They're too low to see is the issue. So uh, uh, About 2.4 to 2.5, something like that. Whoever gets luckier is going to win. PR is on an issue. 1.5, so okay. It's gonna Decent come entry down. for Will Cox. Cleans That's up a uh, blot, but still has to leave the direct five yeah, in front. Yeah, uh, he still needs a... Decent roll that counts. That's Six one makes the eighth probably great make shot. It, yeah. What else? Needs a four right now. Four and nope. cleanup helps quite a bit. But Wilcox having trouble picking up that blot not to anymore. make his ride home easier. And you come out from the back too, and not rolling with any double four issues. Yep. Most flexibility. Now you want to break your nine point. Or six enters quickly, so Victor really wants to get in and, and have fly There's a shots four. He's supposed to play 17 we'll 11 and play it 9 to 5 to break it now while he's on the roof. Now you can just make the 11 point Why? and not have a direct six away contact point that's easy to clear later. But you're right about this tactical opportunity to play in the five is nice as well. Leave the four or five shot from the roof of the blotting board before it gets more difficult. Both look quite nice. The problem with this, if he was a four, and he's, he's, he still has a good game. Yeah, that's very true. There it is. He's going to get punished. This is amazing. Out to the ace. Or, sorry, out to the 15, leaving an ace. 6-5 is going to clear naturally. One more point for Will to clear until he's until it's pretty well gin. But, obviously, a lot of shots here. Victor's just trying to build his board as best as possible. I guess coming out just, just fine instead of stacking it. But stacking is just yeah. fine. I would have thought out as well. Slightly better? Okay, yeah. 4-3. Four, four, three. Three, what a shot. Perfect shot. Rolling lights out in the end here. Actually, there's still double six shot. Victor's saying, what can I do? Yeah, what can you do? Well done, Mr. Stellings. If he can just carry this home, I guess got actually Victor beat me in this in the when he had three percent. Yeah. Oh, Victor played two threes. Tricky. Oh, really? Remember the the four cube I sent him? He had like three percent, and he I rolled like five one four one three one back to back, and he rolled like double sixes. It does sound familiar. Yeah, it sounds very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> this might be less than three percent, not in the game, but in the match. I'm not sure how these guys stay focused and play well for that long. I can't do it. I really can't. I need, I need at least uh, like five breaks in between just to try. 
Because <laughs> it's it's hard to stay focused for that long. Yeah, that's for sure. It's a practice thing. I know Wilcox is uh, one of the meditators today, for sure. Today I played my first ever 17-point match. Yeah. And I'm not even joking. That's fun. Yeah, a lot of the players, I know Mochi does a lot of things like that to keep his head in the game, but um, Wilcox, big on the meditation and bodily health and all these things are just, um, you know, showing up to a tournament and playing your best for three hours takes a lot of physical things to keep you in the game too. You if you haven't it practiced like it, it's going to be hard, times. you know? If you don't focus on it, you're going to, oh, look at this, 2.48 <laughs> exactly for nice. both of them. Okay. Pretty nice PRs there. Oh, there's a bet on this. They better decide this somehow. <laughs> you guys can't do this to the fans. <laughs> Will's going to win because he's going to have one more decision, which is hilarious. Actually, no, it's it's a, it's a whoever, whoever's going to win the PR. Who, who was on the bar left? How win? brutal would be a, a wash on, on a three-hour PR bet? That would be rough. Yeah, why not take a checker off? Unless unless someone makes a small mistake like that. There we go. I think that's enough. Well, if Victor plays perfectly, it will be. I don't know if that changes a 2.48. Anyway, who cares? It's not the UBC. Both these guys play great. They're not going to be yeah, ashamed really of that. Yeah, really amazing stuff. Exciting match to watch for sure. Always great to see top level backgammon like this. 5 1. There's a 6 1. Maybe Victor's last chance here. Needs an ace. Well done. 4 2 is going to clear safely. Offers the hand. Well played by both. And Wilcox will be advancing. And that's our match results. It's hard to see on that little screen there. We don't get it on the summary anymore. We'll show it. There we go. 2.45 to 2.46. <laughs> Victor winning by a nose. Is that official? Is that official, Bets and Chat? Commentator calls it official. You can take that to plus plus court, roll out, whatever you need to do. That's pretty close. There'll be match files available. <laughs> that seems fair to watch too, but... Wow, incredible stuff. I don't recall the last time I've seen such a long match played at such a high level by both players. That's amazing. Under 2.5 average PR is as good as it gets in the world. Um, exciting. We might not see that again for the entire week. Um, we'll be back at 2 p.m. tomorrow, though, and starting with another round of the World Championships. I'll be on commentary again with you guys and don't know who our players will be. We'll pick something overnight. We'll try to advertise that to you earlier. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoy that that Monte Carlo Grand Prix board that we've got. You can check that out in the Galaxy Shop, Galaxy Shop, with those Tempest Clocks. Hope everyone's enjoying playing on the new iPhone app as well. We'll have that in the Android store soon. And thanks so much to Bill and Tara for running the stream. Aviv on the transcription, doing his best in there. And for all the hard fought matches from all the all the players today. Exciting stuff. We'll be back tomorrow. Can't wait for more. What's up? What's Bill saying? Oh, we get to chat with Will Snellings before we go? All right. Come on over. You're looking fresh for an interview. You get a microphone here. Super, super excited to talk to folks. Uh, wow, what an impressive, I mean, cleanest match I think we've seen all week yet. Both of you under a 2.5, just like, I mean, I don't know what the odds are for an average under 2.5 across both players ever, right? So, yeah, so yeah. really nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder, are there any positions you really wondered about that you can think of or anything like that? I mean, it's a long match. I doubt you remember watch, but... Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. That. 
That, <laughs> gotta turn on his mic. Yeah, that would help. Not, <laughs> now I need to, to modify my voice. No, I really, honestly, I just I don't remember anything. Yeah, n notable. He gave me a, a lot of doubles, and I thought, yeah, maybe a couple might have been a fraction early, but uh, yeah, like almost everything he doubled, I think I took. It, right, had any action? You had a lot of snap takes, right? Really easy decisions where he was, um, yeah, uh, yeah. it was or, just kind of simple, and he had to think a lot about his side of the cube. Yep. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. he had taken long enough that, it, that yeah. I had decided by then they weren't all necessarily simple. <laughs> it's just that I, sure. you know, I'd made my decision, and, and you'd yeah. rather, if you know you're going to take it, you'd rather act casual about it. So yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. You guys had some really complicated positions you got into. I remember there was an interesting one where um, he was stuck back with many checkers back in a bar point and had like a five prime made to the six to the deuce, and I eventually was able to cash that game. Yeah, just a small I, I, I cube on the way. Ace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was wild. I, I um, thought he might have doubled the roll before. I'm not saying it was, but it, but yeah. I thought you know he did have a small cube on that one and missed okay. that one. There were the only cubes I can think of that you missed were some like really. Like entirely volatility. Like the wins aren't usually there, but you have a shot or something like that to decide yeah. the game. A couple that you skated past and caught a tendency in the match at least. Do you actually do you is that a tendency you notice in your game that you you tend to wait and send the solid cube and don't like sending kind of those coin flip kind of cubes where you just have to send it for the last roll effect? No, no I just say those yeah. are like minor errors. I, yeah, I, yeah, you know, they are. I, I, yeah. Of course, when you're playing really strong players, they're going to tend to err on the side of taking too much. So yeah. it wasn't going through my mind, but th that can be a factor. Yeah, they, I got Well, you. especially if they're equal players. So yeah, so you know there's just no chance that you're getting a pass out of it, so it yeah. feels even less exciting to send a volatility yeah. cube like that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, the only one, Ryan was helping us on commentary and mentioned that... Uh, that he has trouble keeping focus through a 17 point match. I know you and I have talked about like meditation techniques and stuff like that. You got any rituals that keep you engaged with the game for I, long I, matches like this? Yeah, we took a couple of breaks and, and I, I do some stretching and yeah. uh, bouncing. And you just, got the coat off toward the end? I noticed I, that. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was getting a little hot actually. Mm. I don't know if it was the, the match <laughs> or the room or you know, what, what was going on, but mm -hmm. yeah, I have a few few things that, that I do and, and some balancing stuff. It's just it's physical the physical stuff. Mental stuff, I try to, you know, I it, as long as I can stay out of my head, the more physical I am, the more I just keep my mind yeah. quiet, I think. so That helps me, too. How do you wind down at the end of a complicated match like that? Can you just go straight to bed, or do you have to go through something? Yeah, yeah, yeah not not really through the pro process. Even if the yeah. match was available, I don't want to see it for a while, especially yeah. since I know it was played well. When it's not yeah, yeah. played well, you kind of don't want to see it. <laughs> you kind of need to see it. So yeah, yeah. I still would wait till the next day. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to yeah, hang out with my wife for a little bit and see. Oh, nice. It'll, it'll yeah. take me a while to, to get to sleep because you're wired. Yeah, Win or lose, exactly. you're, you're wired. Yeah. I feel the same way. Hanging out with a partner seems like a good way to get your head in a different space. I always have to like <laughs> read a book or do something that's not mathy or puzzly or backgammon right. at all and just disengage and get it running different. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's late. You got to get some sleep before. Well, you have till 2 p.m. tomorrow, so you're doing pretty well. On yeah, yeah. That nice, flexible schedule. But that wow, it was a real pleasure to watch you guys play. Thank you but, so much, Will. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty nice to get this kind of draw because, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, you play an, an ex-champion from three years ago and you play yeah. Victor who... He is or was the best player in the U.S. <laughs> and and elsewhere. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good competition. You know, yeah, the so. match against uh, Eli Romy won pretty well. Then Romy, I, 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 don't, I don't know what the oh, I didn't get the PRs were. I haven't seen him yet. But yeah, anyhow, th you. thanks for your commentary and yeah. See you guys soon. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, what's up, Victor? Oh, well, what what was the how you were uh, two, two four five two four six. Yeah, you guys averaged together under a 2.5. Played you lights out, almost five. equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, and I know Victor knows him, your next opponent is from New York City, and Antonio Scumbato. Do you know him? Uh, oh, really? No, but uh, I spent a lot of years in New York, so that's good. Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's Italian. He lived I, in the I UK. Yeah, Victor knows him well. And white? What? That's who plays uh, oh, he's next, next round. Yeah, that's that's gonna be Maybe that's gonna be easier. <laughs> easier, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too much. Too much. <laughs> that's easy to lose, you know. <laughs> uh, but what, so. what was the interesting, you know, stuff there? What, where, where did we pull up? Oh, take the microphone. I don't know. We'd have to take the whole file and go through it. You don't I was saying, um, I think most of your early cubes were pretty good. You had one or two that was ahead, but in general, you were. Like just always the whole match, like right on the borderline I, I and felt, getting them right. I, I felt like it was 
Cuban very aggressive. I think at 11:10, uh, yeah. it was a little bit a uh, um, little bit of a stretch of a cube. I was up 17 pips. But yeah. again, if it's a mistake, two percent maybe, you know. Yeah. I, I, I rolled double six. I hit him on the ace. He came with three. I was up 17 pips. I gave a cue because 11, 10, you know, I had upset. I rolled double three, double five. I can gammon him. I can win a race. Yeah. Because I rolled stupid five one. I'm not sure if I play it correct. I probably should hit him and go to the deuce. I mean, it's just so yeah. many plays. So many. Plays. That one, uh, the hitting the deuce was slightly incorrect, and I was surprised you were even considering it. It didn't come to I my did. mind. In, in but my, yeah, in it was my really mind, close. Like I yeah. See, yeah. I'm bringing it up, so I did <laughs> yeah. consider. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's really good stuff. Yeah. And I think that cube particularly might have been one of the early ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh yeah, the early ones. Yeah. I think my actual cubing was pretty sharp. I was I was yeah. online. I felt like I was giving pretty aggressive cubes. Uh, yeah. I mean I wish I would give something that he can he can think about about passing, <laughs> but right. I mean I felt like I have upside on those cubes and, yeah. and I just couldn't give up. Plus you know, playing against Wilcox, you know, you just don't adjust at all. Yeah. I'm just playing, you know, I'm just trying to do my best and sure. whenever I feel it's a cube, I just give a cube. Yeah. I don't I don't bother myself with extra thoughts, you know, about Absolutely, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> all this, but you know. Yeah, your tendencies that you get wrong. I was really surprised. Wilcox made some complicated plays, I thought, very quickly over the board. Uh, he played very fast. Yeah, I actually, I felt like I'm outplaying him for majority of the match, but it seems like PR is close. Yeah, because I felt like he was just. Um, I think some of his checker plays look suspicious to me. He played too fast. Right, and, and like just, burying checkers yes. behind yeah, and yeah, killing yeah, six yeah, yeah, and that, that, just that, always right. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. That, that, that was that generally. Was. But again, yeah. you know, it's easier to see or easier to see opponent mistakes, and obviously not as easy to see your own. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we played about the same, and uh, it's totally no surprise agree. he's a great player. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna get and go go get some sleep. <laughs> Enjoy. Come, come it was a pleasure. That was such an exciting hey, match. Thanks, for thanks your so job. much. You, know, you have to stay oh. so late for, for oh, all thank of you. us. Thank you. I wouldn't be anywhere else. <laughs> Take it easy. Glad we got some player interviews here. Um, and that'll actually wrap it up for the night. We'll see you guys tomorrow at two PM. Later, everybody. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, lost the Crawford game, had some chance to roll it back quite a bit. All right.
Oh, you guys got to be here for the lecture again? No. Yeah, yeah. I thought that setup worked pretty well. Really yeah. good. Cool. Oh. oh, is Mark still around? 